ten seven. Hello. Oh. Hello. Oh. oh my lord. Yes, you did. Jeez. Yes. Chat, you were missing something extraordinary. What? <laughs> Yes. Okay, so we had okay. this this outrageous. What on earth is even happening? So our rolls, mind you, this is out of a, a total of two thousand. Okay, this is one hundred d twenty for uh, for our uh, inspiration day. Yes, inspiration day. Uh, Garrick rolled a ten sixty eight. Then Mort rolled a ten sixty six. Only oh, yeah. two away. Now you might think, wow, what are the chances, right? But then Aaron Wynn rolled a ten sixty eight. The same as Fleming Garrick. And then Emil rolled a 1070. Only two away from that. Um, and then Oren came in and rolled what I think <laughs> is the highest number I've seen to date. 1196. Hang on. Hang on. Yeah, let's see. I mean, look, if there's anything else close, I'm something, you know, there's a glitch in the, in the simulation because that's... Uh, <laughs> Too eerie. Holy Toledo. Oh, come on, Fantasy Ground. I just updated you. Do not take... <laughs> no dice for you. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 Oh, come on. Well, I'll keep an eye on that as you are trying to get Fantasy Grounds to behave. Um, all right. So, I think we're going to kind of jump in fairly quickly here. Actually, let me send the tweet out so we've got that. Um, now you're back in time. Yay. Yay, I'm so glad. <laughs> um, for anyone that's here that hasn't, that's new tonight, uh, whew, we're on episode 143. Yeah, 143 yes. of that's Stormfall. Oh. Bananas. <laughs> Yes, incredible. And our group here is out to save one of the original characters of the campaign, Kaylin. In fact, the only original character. Still no, Emil. Emil. No, no, I was sorry. I was going to say is Emil. The only original character still playing, you know, with the group is Emil. Mm. Uh, of course, many of the players, uh, you know, we have a number. Uh, gosh, yeah. Right, Sam's been here since the get-go. Poor Sam, rest in peace. Her character, she's going. She's been through a few. All of them, all yeah. three of them. <laughs> nice, uh, Melissa as well. Um, and uh, Beth played Astrid uh, before Blueberry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, gosh, I mean, everyone else has been here so long too. It just uh, Ed, you know, Ed's sorry. been here since the beginning. Ed's been here since the that's right. Yep, yep. <sighs> I've been here course, since Felix. <laughs> I've been here since 2018. Mm hmm mm hmm Yep, Frank and, and, and Mariah. Oh my gosh. We just what an incredible crew. Oh, all right. Did we get any others? Oh, and then Devonna came in with a 962. Oh. <laughs> Fancy grounds is still loading. So oh, honey. Yes. No, just kidding. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> go ahead and start. <laughs> Nice. Um, all right. Uh, so I actually had a boatload of work to sort out with Solaria. So I did that instead of coming up with a recap. So our awesome heroes here uh, have ventured through the Wildwood Thicket. They're almost they're in the final week of travel, a few days out from the border between what the Wildwood Thicket and Solaria, the sunken kingdom of Solaria. And um, they're looking to save their friend Kaylin, who, through a, whew, an intense set of events, a long, winding path, um, found herself in a position to save somebody um, and, uh, and take their place, uh, effectively becoming one with a very bad, bad entity, Baz Buvar. Very, very ancient Demi Lich, one of the founders of the, the seven, I think it's the seven wizards, uh, red wizards of Thay. Man, it's been tough, but our friends are here to go and save her. Interrupt a particular ritual that's going to take place in just over two weeks' time. Um, if they find a way to successfully buy, uh, banish Yithas, um, 
from the plane, it, it will only banish Yathaz, and Kaelin will remain. Uh, but there's a lot of moving pieces. They're uh, they narrowed down the rituals it could be, but they're not sure which one exactly. Uh, there's so much happening, but they have to get there first, right? So we've uh, encountered just a few days of travel out of the Wildwood Thicket before reaching the end of the Wildwood Thicket. Um, a bit of an opening in the forest here where uh, splayed out a platform of sorts. Um, not necessarily rusted, but overgrown with brush and other things, a lot of sprockets and mechanical pieces. It would appear uh, to be little bits of um, a platform laid out across the ground. Vines and such wind up and around. Clearly hasn't been used for some very long period of time, however long that may be. Uh, with a small pedestal off um, in the clearing to the right, about 10 feet uh, distance away from this platform. Um, so I'll just set you all in there. Um, this is what you see. What would you like to do? Mm, probably check out. Is there anything on the platform, or um, you you might have to cut through some of the brush and 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 uh, and such to to see. It almost looks like it's in um, instead of a one continuous platform, like it's in sections that are that are broken up a bit. They might unite um, if this were activated or operated. But it's you know somewhat um, worn down. I think it was brass. Yeah, uh, Arn would work. Would take his rapier out and try to work through some of the brush, probably to get over there. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> are we? Uh, yes. Ah. Um, yes. Yeah, so for most of this, it's a number of those gears and sprockets with a, a few pieces of uh, like sheets of metal that give the look of a platform. But as you're hacking through. Taking a closer look, you see that the pieces seem to be separated by, you know, several feet each. And um, there's just a lot of gear work here that you're clearing through. Um, again, there's a short altar-like uh, operational um, type of structure about 10 feet out from the device. Um, and uh, I'm just reading through here what I wrote up. Yes, tarnished brass gears. That's what it was. Yeah, so um, it doesn't... This looks like a, a clearly a mechanical structure of some sort. There doesn't seem to be anything to operate it here. And it's... T aside from looking like maybe it assembles into a platform of some sort, it's not giving you many clues. Um, well? Okay. So you said there was an operational something that looked like it was an operational thing? Yes. To yes. operate it? Mm -hmm. it? It looks like there are short, uh, in each of the cardinal directions, there is a little altar, uh, maybe a five foot tall uh, altar like structure that um, looks important. I'm going to make his way to one of those. Does anyone want to do anything or look at anything while Warren's sort of initially hacking through and looking? Uh, you mentioned, a, is the pedestal one of those altar thingies? Yes, or... I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if seeing Warren check out one altar, Mort will go over and check out mm. in the opposite cardinal direction. Uh, okay. Um, anyone um, else? Oh. Aaron Wynn's going to keep an eye on the forest around them. Okay. Just to make sure nothing sneaks up on them while we're all investigating this thing. Perfect. And I'm sorry, Ed, I think you were muted. <laughs> I, I saw you talking, but I didn't catch. Uh, is that better? Yes. Okay, so I've been muted this whole time. Yes. <laughs> nice. Excellent. <laughs> oh, Excellent. no, Ed, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh garrick's probably uh got his grubby hands on um all of the uh the cogs and stuff like that trying to figure out how this stuff works and then head to one of the altars as well okay all right 
Um, anything for rain while you see everyone separating and doing this? Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get. Uh, wait. No, no, I don't want that spell. I want the spell below it. Um, I'm gonna cast detect evil and good and just perimeter like kind of like a bodyguard um just stand around and um just make sure nobody comes near like right. so i have it's <laughs> concentration up to 10 minutes okay so. nice um, Devanya, anything for you as, as you see Rain sort of make that perimeter check, Aaron win, make that check, and, and everyone else going about their investigation stuff? Um, yeah, I don't have a mechanical brain whatsoever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, she's just going to stay put and just do the same thing as Aaron win because she's uh, no mechanical brain whatsoever so um do you guys think it's all right to separate i mean i i know it's close by but what's the uh, what's the distance between the altars um it's probably like a 65 foot clearing uh maybe 50 feet between you know, from one side to the other. The quicker we can get this done, the better, in my opinion. Keep an eye on each other. And with that, I will uh, cast Mage Armor. Mm, okay. Oh, don't keep, keep it. Yeah, keeping it. Everyone's keeping an eye out. Nice. On it nice. <laughs> All right. Um, and I don't know. No worries if you're not there, of course, Emil. But if you are, is there anything that Emil would like to do as everyone starts before I have anyone do roles? Uh, everyone heads out to do. Okay. Figure he's uh, currently away. Emil has slipped into the darkness of the <laughs> the forest to keep an eye out. Something. <laughs> all right, uh, Aaron Wynn, Devanya, um, and Rain, if you can all make uh, perception checks, if you would. Mort, Oren, and Garrick uh, can make investigation checks. Whoa. Um, Dan, for clarification, um, Emil is still stalking somewhere up high. Okay, nice. Uh, and Garrick, if you don't have... Um, uh, proficiency and in investigation, you can go ahead and add it for this check. And you said perception for rain, Dan? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Not sure how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, gosh, what are we at? Uh, we can just add the numbers plus six. So if you just want to add six to whatever you get in your investigation check. And 21 for perception for okay. rain. Uh, 16 perception for Aaron Wynn. 19. Okay. okay. Oh, Devanya. All right. Uh, and there's Garrix. Okay, we'll add that. Um, all right, Oren. Uh, investigation <coughs> is 19. Okay. <clears throat> um, <laughs> and Garrix, you ended up with that. So. <clears throat> all right. Um, um, <laughs> The coast looks clear, thankfully. Uh, the regular, typical sounds of the forest, the small, small creatures fluttering about, is all that you hear. Um, thankfully, you no know, uh, surprises. You've heard a number of strange things along the way here, of course. It seems relatively cl clear. This is um, late afternoon on this particular day. Um, Morton, Oren, and Garrick with the roles. Now, Garrick, you are going to know a little, little bit more than Morton, Oren. But uh, in this case, Morton Oren, you both uh, see these are clearly um, <clears throat> control panels of some sort. They do seem to, uh, there seems to be um, an, 
trying to think of the best term for this. Um, not assemble, but something that would present this platform in its you know, connected state. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's very, uh, it's not your typical technology or it's, it's all Arcana based. Um, but it's pretty, feels pretty foreign, a little differently built and, uh, and such than, um, you're used to. It's built different. Uh, <laughs> um, Garrick, you can see that there are some other functions as well. There is clearly, once that, um, is assembled, there is, uh, It seems to, oh my gosh, let me just look at your number again, yeah. Um, you can tell that this seems to be something relatively, uh, man, I can't find, there's a line that I need to draw with this and I don't know how to, <laughs> I can't find that. You get the same sense of everything, uh, but you can tell that there there's some interactiveness that, that you can perform once this is assembled. As though when it's assembled, it's powered up and then you can interact with it. That makes sense. I mean, you're close enough. I mean, it's 50 feet, but if you wanted to shout uh, and <laughs> or anything, um, you'd hear one another, of course. Gentle breeze blows over the clearing. What do you all make of this? <laughs> well, you're the one that's, uh, you know, interested in the sprockets and the... Garrus, I thought you would know uh, a little bit more about it than we would, Garrick. I was only asking to be polite. Then what do you make of it, Garrick? <laughs> uh, well, clearly these are operating panels, and once they come together, oh, wait, they, they, these pedestals move. It's, oh my gosh, it seems like it's arcane. And then once they come together, it allows us to perhaps do something else come together so we have to build something uh perhaps um it, you know it's just a, a push of a button if each of you presses a particular key in the panel at all four it'll automatically assemble the platform garrick just like slightly leans on on the button on his panel <laughs> what are you doing uh, do we need to press something on them? Yeah, I think we just need to press a button. Uh, hey, okay. Like, even as you're asking, like, Garrett, because you lean on, um, you hear some of the gears <laughs> start to move in, in a portion. This quarter of the, the panels break free from the vines and, and sort of grind as the gears are <laughs> and, and lift panels up vertical. Or it's camera. Lift pins up vertical before laying them sideways and sliding them in an interlocking fashion to create like a pizza slice, a corner of a circular platform raised about three feet off the ground. Is there someone at every one of these button mm -hmm. thingies? One is missing because we have Garrick, Orin, and Mort, but there are fours, one in each cardinal direction. I dash to the other one because pushing a button. Hmm. <laughs> Mort will push button. Okay. Um, before I'm right, before Rain goes and help push a button, do I detect anything before I drop the spell? It's a concentration spell. Uh, nothing currently. Aside from what, you know, was on your friends. Oh, should I? Oh, but that's going to be a first level spell wasted if I drop it and recast it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to continue to have concentration with it. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go push a button. Okay, uh, so we've got Mort. All right, so Garrett pushed a button. Mort, you're pushing yours? Yes. So you're, you see also... Do so we have to okay, keep Aaron, holding the button down, or is it Aaron just pushing, pushing button. Like a... Okay, Just the one press. Boop. All right, after he lets go, he will step away from the altar. 
Okay, nice. <laughs> Aaron, when you rush up, ooh, button! Boop! And you... <laughs> this is cool! <laughs> yes! So, uh, Rain, the, now Orin is standing at the last pedal, so uh, you, you might have to fight Orin to push the button. Oh, okay. Well, mm -hmm. if Orin is, is pushing it, then I respectfully back up, realizing mm -hmm. that there's somebody else. So. Oh, okay. Orin? Orin presses the button. Okay, good and this um disc uh also assembles platforms come up drop down interlock and all four slide and lock into one another and it spins about uh, an eighth turn it seems to lock into place you can still see all the gears and sprockets and and joints and everything um beneath it it's that's about three feet of that up from the ground with the platform resting right there at three feet above um <clears throat> Okay, let's see. <laughs> um, so uh, as that takes that eighth turn and locks in place, there are some other gears below that begin to spin and hum. Um, Rain, your spell was, uh, I'm sorry, it was Detect Magic, right? Or was it one of uh, your... Detect Evil and Evil Good. And good? Okay, so... Right. Uh, let me bring up the spells. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I know that one. Okay. I just wanted to, for some reason, I thought for I panicked. I'm like, wait, oh, no, 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 <laughs> I have the right good. one, don't I? <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, um, these begin to hum. And there uh, is little dust, tarnished dust on the platform that begins to break free kind of float up in the air a little bit off the disc. Um, and uh, the lights on the each of the pedestals glow as a voice speaks, and they boom, 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 boom with each, each syllable. And as this bellowing voice says, Speak thine enemy's name and speak true. Uh, now, Garrick, you're like, mm, okay, this this makes sense. This is the verbal command, the verbal input. Um, with your role as things are unfolding, the additional, some of the additional information you have is that this seems to be, uh, aside from being something very old, um, perhaps something that uh, was used. Uh, maybe in war. Clearly, it's something that hunts down, you know, people, and it's on a pretty large scale, it looks like, as this disc is about 40 feet uh, from end. But Nobody again... say anything. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> again, it said, speak thine enemy's name, speak true. This is some pretty scary tech. We should be careful about what we say. You can talk now. On a scale of one to ten, how scary are we talking? I think the dial goes up to eleven. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, noted. <laughs> no, I. I'm gonna mute myself now because I got the joke. <laughs> Mm. I mean, I could I could say a few things here, but I'll leave it up to the group. Uh, oh. the, the hum is is fairly loud at this point, so I imagine email will have to congregate and have a discussion. Oh. Gear spinning beneath. I think we should probably talk about this. Can we unpress the buttons? Should we all meet somewhere, uh, <laughs> uh, somewhere yeah, well, over over there in the clearing? Why are yeah? you talking so loud? We can't hear above the. He said we can't hear above the humming. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll. Yeah, Mort will start to wa wander off to the side, following Ornan's like pointy. Right. That's what I. Good thinking, Mort. Are we now floating this... still or? Floating. No, we're, was it a we're big not. disc or what? What are we seeing? Yeah, the platform is just a disc in shape. 
um, beneath it are all the gears and everything that have attached to it. The arms, gears, and sprockets. Take up, there are about three feet of things connecting to bring the platforms together into this disc form, interlocking disc form. And um, in certain sections with in, uh, beneath it are gears spinning like around the central area, a few engaging with one another that have begun to spin and hum up. Um, they don't seem to be engaging the upper disc at all. Uh, but they're all uh, near the stem in the center of this platform. <laughs> okay, so Arnwood's going towards the clearing. Everyone! <laughs> Garrick joins, of course. Uh, Garrick, have you seen anything like this before? This seems strange, but... Mm. Is this how your workshop works? Not quite. It's a different mm -hmm. kind of magic. Um, so my family, we, we create magical devices for the Order of Helm. And a lot of the things that we do are based in warfare and combat. And mm -hmm. this, this kind of thing feels like it surpasses anything that we do. Got it. Noted. You say something wrong here it could have dire consequences. Okay. So what is everyone thinking? Do we say anything at all? I mean, should we even utilize this or just keep going? Well, isn't the kingdom thing that we're looking for supposed to be basically underground? Um, the whole thing has sunk, so it's just a huge cavernous, just a oh. big yeah chasm where the kingdom is. You do have to get down there, but but it's not like it's enclosed. Correct. Okay. I mean, I'm curious as to where this goes. Is there any writing on any? Was there any writing on any of the podiums? Uh, no, there was some symbolism. Uh... A foreign symbolism used for you know and you know which button does what uh but not words per se <clears throat> hmm. can i at least try to noodle out you know with the history like does it point to a civilization or a yeah race? yeah if you are proficient in history then Anyone yes, that's I proficient. Am. Nice, nice. Not this character. <laughs> so <Is> close. Right? <laughs> ah, just, oh, oh no. <laughs> I think I wrote the wrong thing. No, you got the right nope. one. Oh, oh. oh the thirteens. Uh it's just um Given that it's a wildwood thicket, you know, there's hardly anything known. This technology, you not quite sure what it's what it does and how it proceeds if you name your enemy or what it's you know gonna do so it's kind of tough to um as you consider your options you're not able to land on anything unfortunately what language did the voice speak in um it was actually through telepathy so it's more like it delivered the thoughts we could also say something really vague like evil evil's our enemy Aaron's actually going to chuckle at that. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what you mean, what you think is evil. <laughs> there goes the entire Cure's Lament group. <gasps> <laughs> you uncovered I my mean, ulterior motive. If you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I guess depending, I mean, I don't know. I mean, obviously it can speak to our thoughts, so it might be able to read our thoughts. So Yeah, so maybe we it just said speak the truth, so speak the truth. With evil. Well, I mean, like, yeah, that I was I was just gonna say yeah, that's because he's the one we're currently hunting down right now. But thine enemy hath been named. It bellows. <clears throat> and cool, cool, cool. <laughs> 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 These swirling flakes above the disc. <laughs> so appropriate. 
<laughs> begin to scroll up and uh, <laughs> look on your face. For Cannon's sake, Mort did say oops. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um a uh the swirling buzzes and buzzes. Uh, and within the center of the circle, a 35-foot obsidian earth elemental is summoned. Is it good or evil? Uh, well, good or, that spell actually doesn't tell you if they're good or bad. It just it's, it lets you know of certain races or, or creature Wait. types yeah. Yeah. Um, are oh. around that are typically considered good or evil. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, 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 is the elemental I... anyone we've met before? Uh, no. In fact, uh, never have any of you encountered in this in this world or heard of an obsidian earth elemental. <clears throat> There's a number of, of stone said... types, but never obsidian. This um... is very... It actually oh, <clears throat> steps down off the platform, opposite direction of all of you, and begins walking through the woods. Bowing and snapping trees along its path. Aaron's going to take a very controlled step forward towards Aaronwyn. I'm just going to... And he looks completely serious. Uh, if what I understand correctly is that Kaelin is being possessed by Yathas, correct? So... Got it. We should follow it. And Aaron's going to start going in that direction. It is, in fact, walking north, slightly northeast. <clears throat> Same direction you're that you're slow on. Slow or fast? Uh, right. It's a 35 foot earth elemental and it has earth glide, so it's going pretty fast. It's breaking <laughs> some trees and stuff. You probably won't be able to keep up, but you can pursue it as, as, as you know best you can. I mean, in the short term, I'm sure you could probably all catch up before it gets out of range if you wanted to. Um, but it but... seems like it's going to start trail. moving. Like, Devonia's going to just start moving. Snapping <laughs> trees. Like... And with each step, its foot kind of slides with, with the earth. Oh. But, I mean, I'll say that you all have time. Because it's summoned and standing there, as you discuss this, it's all happening, like, around the same time. So, if you want to, you know, catch up to it before it gets out of range, you would definitely be able to in this in the first few moments. Um, yeah. 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 But do we, did I hear from uh, just a side note? Uh, mm. Did we have horses, or was that just something I misheard from last session? We no. couldn't. I... Oh, it could. Okay. Because so the world then too thick. Too dangerous. The, the magic carpet. Mm. Get on and magic carpet. Push it. Whoever wants to, uh, up to six people can get on. Um, All right. With your quick thinking. Yeah, it's a weight limit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll say you get yeah most of those people on and <laughs> yeah. you quick thinking throw the carpet down get on and you jump on and you activate it. Um, and anyone that wants to jump on, any can. takers? Well, Orin's already started walking in that direction, okay. so if you um, need hustle, you can get around in front of Orin as it's stepping off the platform. Um, I'll, I'll hop on the carpet. Enter. Okay, Rain, you jump on behind Mort. Uh huh. Uh, no. Who else is getting on? Derek just has his hands on his hips and sighing. <laughs> I'm the only one currently. I think it's just rain. Orange raced over as it's starting to break through the first part of the trees, or and you're able to get around in front of it. Mort, you hop in the carpet, Rain hops on with you. The two of you, if, uh, or if anyone else is jumping on, can also fly over and around in front in its path, if that's where you wish to be. Oh, if they're going to fly, I'll pop out my wings. 
okay. and just fly that way. Then everyone else can get on the carpet. Um, as this has occurred, uh, for Garrick, um, anyone nearby any of the pedestals? If anyone's standing, I, I don't know where you would have wanted to have the conversation. I'm at, I'm just pick, assuming it'd be near a pedestal since that's something mm -hmm. that you want to be near, uh, keep an eye on. So, um, you do see that some additional lights toggle on. Some other information is being displayed on these pedestals now. Um, is it something in a language that we can read, or mm, you'd have to? Uh, it's it's you would be the one I think that could do it, Garrick, because it's more like mechanical um, representation of of. Uh, you know, in the way that they they mark off resistance with ohms and things like there's it's it's a complex series of this that kind of gives you a better idea of like oh this kind of does that, um, but if you want to do another um, investigation check and I'll add plus six for your proficiency. Sure, why not in the dust tower? Yeah. All right. Um, Mort, Oren, and Rain, uh, and Aaron win. Can you all make, uh, if you're proficient in Arcana, please make an Arcana check. Certainly. Um, if you're not, um, oh, then make that? an Arcana check at disadvantage. Okay. Oh, gosh. Natural 20 nice. for 26. Oof. Okay. 25. Nice. Four total. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're just... Mm, yeah. yeah, you're stopping off. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Okay. No. That's... Well, hang on. Six plus one equals seven. I don't know oh, why I didn't gotcha, gotcha. take the disadvantage. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't. Yeah, let me see if I, I can. Maybe you rolled with advantage. Yeah, no. that's all right. We got the the thing. Um. <clears throat> hmm. Yeah, I don't know what it's doing there. Is it the disadvantage you're clicking at the bottom? D I S. Oh, wait, hang on, let me see. I mean, I'm going to go with the... Yeah, there, you there go. we go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Ooh, all right. Um, but so, it's a seven. Okay. More in... Um, or in, you can tell that while this creature is a little stronger than your typical Earth Elementals that you've experienced, uh, if you have any, uh, at least, you know, more, I think, has had some experience with that now. Yeah. Um, uh, it's by I, no uh, by no means close to the level that yet. Do you mean Orin or Aaron? Like, uh, sorry, Orin. Mm -hmm. uh, no, Orin got the crap roll. Right, right. Aaron went yeah. more. <laughs> you, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was below a five. It's, yeah, it's... so delicately put. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, more in Aaron win. Um. Uh, having, I believe, experience with this in the campaign, but if not, I imagine beforehand some Earth Elemental action uh, and and experiencing it as firsthand uh, here, you know, at least partly. Um, <clears throat> you would know that this is not really a threat to Yithaz as is. Um, it's just some important information for you to know as Garrick. Uh... <laughs> it's awesome. Um, uh, Garrick, you determine that, um, so the nature of this, right? Now, now that you're looking at what happens, like, okay, this has been summoned. A, you can see now that uh, the additional information shows, reflects that this creature was summoned, uh, and that it is pursued, the name has been, you know, the enemy has been identified, and that it is pursuing it, and you see a redundancy in this. Uh, and that redundancy is that, um, more specifically, this obsidian, 35-foot obsidian earth elemental is going to pursue that enemy until, A, the creature is killed, the enemy is killed, or the earth elemental is killed. If the earth elemental is killed, a larger, stronger obsidian elemental is summoned from the ring, and it pursues the target. Um, <clears throat> that's that's good to know. Does it uh, does it loop? It continues to loop, as far as you can tell here. 
You don't know oh, what no. its maximum output is, um, but you know that it continues to loop, and that that is apparently the beauty um, of this particular device. Uh, minimal, uh, you know, action needed. You know, if, if if this little one can get it, great. If not, next one's coming up. And you see your other friends flying over to confront this one. Garrick sighs louder and looks at his spell sheet. <laughs> Do I not have? Oh, dear. Oh, yes. Oh, oh okay. That, oh dear, it did not sound good. <laughs> Is anyone still within 120 feet? Yes, I think everyone would be like, even more an Aaron Wynn and Rain and that still. How about Oren? Yeah, I'd be on the edge of it, but yes. A uh, quick message to Oren. Um, how many do I get here? Uh... Oh, awesome. Um, I think it's a cantrip, isn't it? Or first level, so you can just keep firing away. Okay, awesome. Uh, try not to kill it. Can he respond? Yeah. I wasn't planning on killing it. I'm just following it. Okay. If we kill it, another bigger one uh, takes its place. Okay. Just so you know. Is that a bad thing? He's still following it. I mean. <laughs> you see Mort and Rain on the carpet flying around, and Aaron has taken her wings out and is also flying over there. Try not to kill the golem. Here, rapid fire is some <laughs> <laughs> some messages out from the hip. I mean, we named you Thaz as its enemy, so I'm not frightened. I'm following it. So it should lead. It should, in theory, lead us to you, Thaz. That's the word. right. But as Orin mentioned. If that is kind of occupying Kaylin's body right now. Right. If we keep killing this thing, um, it'll eventually take a form which we can't kill. Okay. Well, we'll just not kill it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Board, um, how do you respond? Is your your you know carpet separate? Um, well, Mort's going to ask that. How long do we do we follow? I mean, if we're like two weeks away, we can sleep. He can't. He doesn't. I don't have a good answer to that. <laughs> Maybe we can take shifts on your carpet. <laughs> it's at this point starting to break away a bit in distance. I would say that even at this point, you'll know it won't be long with its its earth stride um, and size as it walks that it's it's going to pull ahead of you. Clear, it's leaving a path of destruction, an obvious trail. Uh, <laughs> Um, but it's it's faster than than your things can keep up with. It. So it's getting ahead of us to where mm -hmm. we can see this. Arn will stop and just pace for a bit. I'll uh, seeing Orn it stop. He'll bring the carpet down to Orn. Like we can't keep up with it. No, we can't. Damn it. Well, it's going to lead us right to it. He is 
noticeably on edge. What's wrong? What's You're wrong? mad at me. I'm not, I'm gonna walk away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna fly away. <laughs> she just sees that the expression. She's like, "This is my fault." Fly away. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, yeah. He'll so he like he would have started to turn to you and started to respond, Aaron Wim, but then when he saw you moving away, he would just start pacing and you know, again. <laughs> Okay. All right. Um, so you find yourselves in the afternoon at near the very end of the Wildwood Thicket um, around this device that uh, continues to hum and spin here. The creature being large enough, still in the distance, breaking trees, snapping them, and some birds flying off in the distance as it walks away. You have the, the rest of the day for travel, and then... Um, and then two more days after that, uh, before you reach the sunken kingdom of Valaria. So what time of the day is it? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Afternoon. Go for it. Okay. Sorry, Ed. No, no, no. Go for it. Oh, I was just asking. I was just wondering what time of day if it was like getting towards evening or whatever. But two thirty-three, somewhere around okay. here in the afternoon. Okay. Uh, Garrick saunters up and says, "Yeah, I was gonna say that was all form and no function, but man, those creators were devious." Uh, Aaron's going to step up to you, Garrick. Uh, so you understand these things better than I do. I, how powerful did it seem? I mean, did it seem like that it could, I mean, it took down some of the forest, but I'm wondering what kind of match, do, do we need to worry that it could get to, her and before we do I think Kaylin can take care of herself um, our best case scenario is if uh, we're able to defeat it or if Kaylin defeats it or if that is occupying Kaylin's body, body defeats it um, because at that point it's at its furthest distance from the spawn point. Does that kind of make sense? So we have the most amount of time until the next one reaches us. Sure. Should we continue our journey? Yeah, at least the... Uh, he points to the destruction. At least it's flat ground from here on out. True. Pondering on the on the carpet. Then he says, I have a thought. I'm gonna run it by everybody without doing it without asking. Please do more. I can try to catch up to it <clears throat> and plane shift it someplace else. I don't think that you can, Mort. You were, we were not able to catch up with it, keep up with it earlier. It went ahead of us. Oh, I have to see plane shift. I have to be within. Oh, I have to touch it for plane shift. There's no way, Mort. It's a smashing idea, but I don't think that it, we could. I don't think that it's possible until we get where it's going. Get where it's going. I guess we just continue on following its path for as long as we can until we need to make camp. Garrick, was there anything else back at the what who's it? The uh, 
with the gears and the pedestals. Um, not really any more I could discern. It's kind of a mixture between technology and alchemy. I understand the technical side of it, but some of the more arcane stuff can't really get a, a handle on. Got it. Thank you. Um, Aaron's going to start walking in the direction that you would assume that they're traveling in. He definitely seems distracted. Mm. Right. And less, maybe a little bit less angry, just more kind of like distracted and off. All right. Um, is everyone good to pack up and continue on the journey? <clears throat> or leave this area and continue on? Okay. Yeah. Uh, he'll, yeah, more to roll up the carpet. And, okay. uh, it's good to run the carpet every so often. So the yeah, end. get the oil. <laughs> <laughs> run it in the system. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, <clears throat> so uh, you pack up and continue on. Um, thankfully, the next. Um, Dan, oh, yeah. since I still have my wings out, I'm going to fly up through the hole in the canopy that this thing has made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I just want to see how far ahead it's gotten to us. Um, it's gotten from us. Mm -hmm. Wow. I can preposition. <laughs> you see, uh, I mean, it's got a good distance. It's. it's Traveling uh, at a fairly quick mm -hmm. rate. Um, no, whatever the mathematical, you know, amount would be for speed. Uh, enough. It's fast, boy. Yeah, yeah. It's it's sort of like with each round, you know, without you know dashing, or even if you're dashing, you're, you lose a little, maybe like fifty feet, thirty feet. Uh, so whatever that equals out to. Um, <clears throat> Depending, I know some of you may have like extra bonus haste and other stuff, but uh, clearly this thing's uh, you know fast and steady. <laughs> um, okay, well, but is it is it the entire way is a very obvious path? It's a pretty obvious path. Yeah, yeah. It's not complete destruction because the trees are pretty tall, but um, you can see where it's broken a number of of the branches of the canopy and elsewhere. It's a pretty obvious path. Yeah convenient hopefully there isn't someone else named named you that's <clears throat> that'd be awkward <laughs> Bing bong. yeah hi, hi. <laughs> I'll, I'll just spend the rest of the hour that i have my wings flying mm. just flying with them around everyone okay neat yeah on on the main path that everyone's traveling on you can see down to it there's a bit of there are a number of different breaks here and there in the canopy so you can keep track of them fly along all right. <clears throat> now, um, let me think. I believe Blueberry is not taking out the Kalen Duck. Maybe privately. Um, Callie is keeping Blueberry Company and Mort and, you know, zipping about here and there just to kind of uh, check in on everyone. Um, she's doing a great job keeping uh, everyone alert to the presence of any potential Feywild um, uh, portals, allowing you to steer clear. Thankfully, no more mysterious, you know, sounds of sword fights or you know duels or, or music or any of that stuff. Do any of you have anything you want to do over the next two and a half days before you reach the border between the Bible Thicket and the Sunken Kingdom of Solaria? Um. Mm -hmm. Like, if we camp, instead of taking a full rest, rain is just going to go into a trance every night. I'm, I'm figuring every, is are you all taking, you know, setting up a proper camp and getting a night's rest? More yeah. pull, uh, mm -hmm. pull out, like, uh, a couple pages from his, or his parchment and during the rest period, he's going to furiously try to figure out rates of walking and how long at the rate that the golem was walking, it's going to take him <laughs> to get to the sunken kingdom. Nice. How long it's going to take us to reach there. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, figure out the difference. Also, figure out based on where the platform was how like how long it takes the golem to get to the sunken kingdom mm, okay. okay so in other words if we see these if we see the golem get destroyed i'll know that we have x number of hours before the next one shows up gotcha gotcha you map it out and of course you're, you're unsure of the, the future terrain or in Talaria, but uh, if it were a straight line um Thanks to you know, your efforts this past week, you gained a day uh, and travel back. So you're looking at um, 17 days. Well, at the end of tonight, it'd be 16 days for all of you to make it to the location of this ritual. Um, your math shows you that this golem would probably get there in um, 13 days. Um, so it's going to be able to cut three days off on its travel. Um, between the disc and the border for you all, that's two and a half days. Uh, for the golem, it's about 40 hours for what it's worth. I know that's a little more specific than I intended, but okay. it's a little less than two days, uh, where it's two and a half for all of you. So hmm. I, I would mm, sur- surmise days. that it would take, well, that's plenty of time. If it, if it gets destroy it's going to take 40 hours to get to the sunken kingdom just to the edge yeah yeah let alone back to would be another i mean the next one if it's bigger and stronger might be able to go a little faster but still you're probably looking at um you know a couple of uh a little less than a couple of weeks for it to get back down there you probably won't encounter a second one I mean, depending um, on how long you hang out down here. <laughs> okay. Um, Aaron would be, you would see him uh, scribbling, uh, like as soon as you make camp and settle, like writing in a journal mm-hmm. um, uh, until like he goes to sleep. Um, and then you'd probably also notice that he seems to get a little more nervous with each day okay all right um anyone else uh, anything before reaching the border sent you a quick message on facebook oh okay i will investigate i rolled a one i'm sorry uh dan i'm also going to send you a message it does not no, I'm I'm ninety five percent positive, and if I'm wrong, we'll just probably just let it be. <laughs> I don't see a problem with that anyway. Uh, sorry, Mariah, you said you're sending me one, or what's what's Rain doing, or were you sending me a message? You said. I think she said she's sending you a message. Oh, thanks. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. Um. Thankfully, this again, last two and a half days are uneventful, um, as you've already had enough on your plate, right? Like, <laughs> you don't need anything else. Um, uh, barring, you know, whatever may come up with rain, uh, you find yourselves finally breaching the forest. Once again, as you have gotten closer and closer to this edge of the forest, um, <clears throat> uh, the trees have been uh, succumbed to the winter temperature uh, in the center of most of the forest they did not Dan, I sent you the message okay thanks uh, no actually nothing here mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> interesting <laughs> Uh, let's see, let's see. So, I'm sorry, I had something else I was sorting out there. We have arrived. Uh, you look out as soon as you leave the forest at last, the, the trees um, cutting off quickly from a lush uh, or from a thick uh, forest of, of leafless trees and some uh, coniferous trees. Um, 
there's only like 120 feet or so where it starts they become a little more sparse and then you're out towards the the edge clearly the uh <laughs> what's happened here is where there were trees they've all just sunken down into the ground you're looking down at, at most definitely uh except for maybe Garrick, who's been around um the deepest chasm a sheer cliff that you have ever 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 you don't you don't see the bottom of it but According to everything you've learned, the sunken kingdom of Solaria is is down, down below. I, you know what? I'm going to have anyone that's proficient in history can make a history check to see if they know. And anyone that isn't, that feels like they might have asked around in Zambora, can make a history check with disadvantage. Oh, oh well, we're not going to need that anyway. <laughs> no. Uh, all right. No. <laughs> Was it a four? <laughs> uh, it was a five. <laughs> oh, progress. <laughs> Neat. <clears throat> Excuse me. 25 for rain. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, um, rain and mort. Um, <clears throat> at some point, you would have been handed, uh, because no one specifically asked, um, I'm going to say you didn't, it's not something you've thought of up until now. You've been handed a bunch of information. Um, and you know what? Maybe it's in the pamphlet. How about that work? In the pamphlet that's, you know, kind of everyone shoved, shoved, uh, shoved in their pockets or whatever. Um, it talks a little bit about uh, the, the Duncan Kingdom of Solaria here. This is a monumental 12 mile descent. This will take seven hours descending this sheer cliff um, at your climbing speed, <clears throat> which is half of your, your movement speed, unless stated otherwise. So just so, you know, as, as Morton Rain, you're kind of looking through the pamphlets like, oh, you oh, like you might need to plan a little differently than a normal descent, uh, given that it is seven hours of using Beatons and rope and other things like that. You... There isn't much other information. It's just sort of very dry, generalized information. But you know that the kingdom is sunk down there. There have been people that go down and have come back up. And, and you know, there are ruins down there of the kingdom. Um, the remnants are down below. But, you know, it becomes dark. You look down and the sun only goes so far. 12 miles. And it's probably going to be toasty down here. Um, I just look up. Mm -hmm. Go, please. Sorry. <laughs> You're fine. I, I just look up more. Look at the pamphlet. And just shake my head. Mort's going to do the, 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 the total dad thing. He's going to unfurl the plant. Give it a look. All right. About seven hours over very rough terrain. Mm -hmm. uh, who here can fly? This is Erwin. Just Erwin? I assume so. Okay. Maybe he'll can uh, fly for an hour. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I have my wings for an hour. I have my uh, steed, which has, I have both of my horses, which can fly. <laughs> and then we've uh, got the carpet. Right. I, uh, At the surface, I mean, is, is this the, are we heading on a vertical surf? I mean, is this vertical? Yeah, it's like a, I, I'm, I'm imagining, Dan, it's like descending the um, Grand Canyon kind of thing. Yeah, yep. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Was there Grand any Canyon's water? About a little less than, a, I think, a mile. We're just over, so just under, just over. So it's, that's what you're looking down, though. <laughs> was there any water on the surface that you could see up here where, you, where you've been are you sorry are you asking me like walking down well he was asking Mort oh okay. oh uh is there any water I can see like like asking like water going down like 
it's trickling down the surface, Dan, of the uh, of the side of this. I'm asking because he has mm. the spider climbing boots. I mean, oh. he has the the slippers of spider climbing, but they if it's slippery, he can't. Interesting. Well, there's a lot of snow up here. Um, temperatures are, you know, they fluctuate over, over your travel here. They've gone up above freezing and then down below, so you know the snow melts. So it's entirely possible. Uh, currently, it's been pretty chilly the past few days. You don't see they don't it doesn't appear to be slick currently, but it, it would probably be a concern. I mean, I have these, you know, you know, kind of point to these slippers in his bag. I have these that allow me to walk on services, but I can't do it if it's slippery. Hmm. So I would probably need a backup in case we came across something that was perilous. Water, ice. Can we not just climb down is there no are there no stairs anywhere there are no i've got uh an arcane parachute of sorts we could <laughs> oh. <laughs> nice five of us could theoretically jump off and i could cast featherfall before we go splat the entire way mm-hmm that's only five of us. We're three short. But can we take the carpet down? The rest for the rest of us. Oh yeah, we could do that. A combination. Whoever wants to risk it, I mean. <laughs> risk it. I mean, not the carpet. Risk the feather fall and all that working and. <laughs> Right. Um, two points that I'll just add. One with you did take a few hours before you left to Zambora um, to gather goods. So I'll say that the the petons and and rope and all that are things that you probably would have picked up just to be prepared, knowing that you it's a sunken kingdom and you probably have to climb down. Secondly, uh, and visual inspection, this part of the cliff does seem to be fairly sheer, and while it pops out and goes back in a little bit, you know it seems to be relatively good, but um, you may um, be con concerned about some areas as it goes down. Uh, it may come out more, you know, so if you're jumping off here, you're jumping off here, you might hit like part way down where it starts jutting out more before you hit the bottom. Because uh, as you look around, you kind of see that up and down the sides to barely any. All right, just a question. It, you're saying it's seven hours because it's difficult to rain, so that's half movement speed. Correct. Okay. I mean, we have, we got this rope, but we could just rappel down like we had originally planned. Maybe use the carpet as a backup. Tip fly. Someone could fly under everyone as they descend, just in case someone falls. More just <laughs> again, he's doing numbers in his head. <laughs> this is a team building exercise. More, I'm not sure <laughs> what the. <laughs> I could take the carpet, take some people down on the carpet so far because I'm moving at twice speed on the carpet. Not sure. Comparative to us, us walking. Okay. Uh, take them down an hour. Take half the team down for an hour. So leaving half of our team by themselves. Yes, uh, that's why I'm doing the numbers. That's why I'm thinking about this. I, I, I can. I do have a, a, a horse I can summon that could carry one or two people as well. Um, I don't know if I can summon my Pegasus here from this far, the, <laughs> but if she can come. Uh, that maybe another one or two people as well. Can the horse fly or walk down vertical walls? Uh, it's a nightmare steed, so it can just fly. Okay. That's something. That's... You can only summon that once a day. Yeah, but there's no time limit. Oh.
That gets us close. Devanya, can you fly? And for how long? And for how long? That's the major question. Give me a second. I don't even think it's in my character sheet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my books with me. No, no. Um, I don't fucking balls, man. <laughs> I'm a 12 year old. Uh, um, I believe there is a spell. It's summon arcane steed, maybe uh, the spell. I was not prepared for that question, so <laughs> I didn't have my shit. <laughs> Um, Neither was I. <laughs> <laughs> She's got wings. Just give me a minute. <clears throat> Excuse me. <sighs> I don't know if this is going to help, but I have freedom. <laughs> we talked about leaving. I have freedom of movement. If that will work. That helps with like grapples and stuff. I don't think it would help with repelling. Uh, the target movement is unaffected by difficult terrain. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, you're right. You'll be right. <laughs> You'll be right. right, Sam. All right, what's your what's your consensus? Seems y'all are thinking about this a lot harder than I am, so I will just... I mean, I think... I've already given my opinion, but... Oh, speak now or forever hold your peace. I, uh, Orange just want to start I'm getting rope repelling God, stuff. <laughs> Give me a fucking minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> Brain is just going to hop on the carpet. If, if not, um, I'll take Erwin's offer on her nightmare. <laughs> it's been a week yeah right. I'll summon uh, Thelonious my arcane steed All right. and then see if I can whistle summon whatever reach out for oh for, uh, Sandra my pegasus I don't know if she'll come, but hey, I can try. Nice. Okay. You could certainly try. Indeed. <laughs> I'm just going to collect everyone's, uh, you know, what they're going to do is and then play it out. Um, worst case, uh, if Mort's willing, if we, if we don't have enough room on the carpet, Garrick is willing to be flown <laughs> like several, you know, tens of, fifties, hundreds of feet across the, the chasm and then just like walk off and try the parachute out. Yeah. And just to, I, just, just to I don't slope. think it's gonna come to that, but I have the parachute ready. Just okay. in case. And all I'm asking, do not pull a keyless. <laughs> no, it'll be like in the second Bill and Ted movie when they're falling into hell and just ah, for okay, hours on end. This is a one mile drop. It there is no you don't even roll for that. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I, I, all I'm asking, please, please, for the love of God, do not pull a keyless. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well the, the Grand Canyon's around one mile. This is twelve. <clears throat> 12 miles like, down. Two, mm -hmm. 12. Oh, 200. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, how tall is this canyon? That's like 12 miles. So yeah. If you're looking. So down. we're talking about 60,000 feet, roughly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Do not pull a keyleth. Do not pull a Marisha and just have your have Garrett. Free fall. 
Uh, yeah. All right. Well, let, let me let me let me hear what you're all planning on doing. So we have um, Garrick with his backup plan. Rain, uh, more. Do you have the carpet out for Rain to jump on, or are you still? I'll have the you... carpet out for anyone who wants to get on it. Okay. Rain I'm gonna. Um. I was gonna hop on Aaron Wynn's night steed. Oh, okay. You're hopping on. I'll have the night Trevor. Steed. Trevor. I haven't okay. named him. I keep calling him something different every time. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right, uh, you do easily summon, of course. You cast a spell, uh, Arcane Steed, and summon forth your Nightmaker, currently known as Trevor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it may be Thelonious, it may be Charles, it may be Trevor. Perfect. <laughs> and then I'll and then I'll whistle for my whistle, magically summon, reach out for my Sandra, my Pegasus. Okay, can you roll a percentile die, if you would? You got Let's, this, Sam. I'll just do that in here. Because uh, if you are able to summon your Pegasus, I would rather have your Pegasus mm. fly on your Pegasus because reasons. Ooh, okay. Ninety-one. Okay, cool. um, so uh, you, you've known thus far. It seems that you kind of have to bring your Pegasus with you. Okay. Um, there, it there. You feel like there may be an oper- maybe a chance in a clutch situation, but it's a little more clutch than that. But that was a good roll. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, I'm gonna do the whole introductory, stick my hand out, look the animal, smell my scent, and gain. Uh, I mean, he's just a straight up nightmare. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you have to gain. You have to gain the animal's yeah. trust. Go ahead, make yeah, a, an animal handling check, Rain, if you would. Oh gosh. Now, can I give? Can I give her advantage because it's my nightmare? No, only because it doesn't have a name. <laughs> you keep calling it different things. <laughs> She had it. She couldn't. See, here's the thing. She couldn't remember its name because she got the horse before she went to the college. Right, right. And then things happened, and now she just can't, she can't remember. Oh gosh, awesome. it's a nine. Okay. Now, are you both going to try and ride this? Because that's going to change some things in in a, in a bit. Yes. Okay. All right. Good to know. Arn will get on the carpet. Okay. So he's more- going to put his. Uh, slippers on just in case. <laughs> um, all right, don't want to get any, any dirt on the carpet, get either, comfy. So. Yes, yeah, right. <laughs> Let me slip into something more comfortable. More, yes, <laughs> and you put your slippers on. Um, Divanya, what mode do you want to shoot for here? Uh, she's just gonna pop her wings as her bonus action, and they look like bat wings, and she's mm. just gonna fall off the edge. Okay. <laughs> she's just like, um, they last until she dies or is incapacitated or she dismisses them. By the way, oh, these are your ass the same, uh, the otherworldly wings. Uh, sorcerer. Oh, uh, okay. Level okay. fourteen stuff. Gotcha. That's Last awesome. That covers it. Yeah. So we got three on horses, and we can put five bit. on the carpet. Good. I wasn't looking forward to trying out your theory. <laughs> uh, oh, you wasn't looking for you weren't looking forward to free falling, Derek. Free falling. Twelve miles, no, not particularly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no. All right, so she'll yeah. stop a couple feet from the, a couple feet down, just okay. waiting. Nice. All right, so uh, reigns with Aaronwin. Um, Orin is around. on the carpet with more. Devanya's flying. Mm-hmm. Garrick was carpet. Carpet and Emil. If you're if you're handy, I can check back in with Emil because technically Emil could be a swarm of bats, if like worse come mm. to worse, right? <laughs> if uh, there, yeah, if there's a uh, <laughs> bad occurrence. Well, just quick question, just since we're all starting to fly down, mm-hmm. right? You all disembark. You... I know something that can't fly. From our vantage point, do we see the obsidian elemental trying to go down this terrain? <laughs> As you fly up and past, you can now fly up above the forest and get a better look if you wanted to. And you can see some half a mile west of you. Bru- you know, all the trees and brush being broken and a huge oh, slosh uh, uh, um, 
of stone down the cliff where it kind of chipped off and fell off the end. Well, and uh, you can see a couple slide, of tung, but tung, it can, it can earth glide, mm. so it can still go through the earth. Mm. So you're seeing some <laughs> sections where it's probably traveling down through there. Okay, just curious. Mm. Mm. <laughs> All right. All right. So it should take us three and a half hours. Hey, uh, Blueberry watches. Sadly, as everyone flies away. Not just kidding. Uh, Blueberry so, <laughs> is I, getting ready to go. He jumps up on the carpet and says, oh, just a minute. And hops off the carpet and goes to take a pee in one of the trees before traveling for seven <laughs> hours. Um, and that's where we'll take our bio break. <laughs> uh, for anyone new, we take about a 10 minute bio break. I'm going to go knock that out and we will catch you all. Remember, our audio will be hot so you can still chat with us. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you here shortly. <laughs> uh, all right, our screen is up. I'll catch you all soon. Ed, before you leave, your back, the like your lighting is perfect tonight because I just like the boy behind. Ed's lighting is always perfect. It's okay. God, this is such a team building exercise. Oh yes. right. You have one boat. You can only go across the river. You can only carry three people, but not these two people, and then those two people. Yes. <laughs> It makes me think of, uh, oh gosh, the boat. I'm thinking of Hercules in Hades where the, oh gosh, the little guy who's in the boat that carries River, you to... River Sticks? I don't know. I think that's what it is. But, yeah. And thank you for the card. I really, really, really like the message. And now I'm very skeptical about the package now because of our chat, it, it, the chat, what, what you sent Melissa. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. It's okay. <laughs> Y'all are getting keychains. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 <laughs> Which are amazing. I like my little fighter keychain. Oh, did that one come in already? Yeah. Oh, nice. That yeah. Was fast. Yeah, I um, have not received my car from Beth yet. Oh, and UPS has taken a but uh, a long time because uh, like last um uh, the last um, virtual panel I did was a one piece panel. I got to meet Colleen Clickenbeard and Lucy Christian, and I got to the like they do a um uh, like a snapshot during the um. Uh, one-on-one -on -one chat and uh, yeah, yeah, I ordered one and Lucy should have been here on the sixth, but nope, it's not, it's, it still hasn't came in yet. And I'm afraid that it got lost in the mail and I'm gonna be very upset. So. How's your week been, Steph? Okay. Yeah, it's been fine. That's good. I started my I started my digital photography class and my, my basic writing for nice. the media this week. Exciting. Yeah, we didn't really do anything. Oh, I need a book. I have to do a chapter 12 quiz. Oh crap. I need to find that book. Sorry, thinking that loud. And but um yeah. Started that. And I'm, I'm terrified about my basic writing class because grammar's not my strongest suit. And yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a difficult 16 weeks, but yeah, it's going to balance out with photography. So I'm excited. How are you, Warren? I'm okay.
I'm going through my Pinterest boards. Pinterest is always fun. Updating, taking things out I don't like anymore. I like looking through Pinterest and all, I, all the old Pinterest things that I've posted. reflexes thanks <laughs> what just happened i sneezed and i caught it just in time oh before you sneezed into the mic mm, yep, yep. <laughs> i'm trying to get better at that so sour patch and red bull that sounds like an acid reflux attack just waiting to kill me <laughs> just waiting Polyhedral, I believe it's understood that it's hot, Mike, during the break. Yes. So if you do have questions for the players, like what's going on, or who's Kalen, or mm -hmm. why hasn't this particular character punched Aura in the face yet? I mean, those are, those are questions you can ask the players during the break. Yeah. Yeah, ask us any questions. I need to pull up chat. Man. I'm surprised you ha Emil hasn't punched him in the face yet. Emil Emil made his peace with Oren. Emil, Emil said that he would do his best to take him at his word and help him yeah. with his sister. I mean, that was after the punch, but you know. Correct, yes. <laughs> Hello, chat. Yeah, I really gotta use the restroom too, but I'm too lazy to get up. But okay, that that has a very bad outcome though, so don't do that. From memory, I think when we met Oren, three characters punched Oren. It's Emil. Galathor did, I think, before Galathor hey. left and Garrick joined. Has Galathor been? I, th I thought Oren met Galathor and then Garrick joined and Galathor went off to Sigil. Let's just say polyhedral, like the way that we, us as a group was introduced to Oren, he was kind of, he was kind of a stuck up, I wouldn't say, he was a little bit stuck up, so three characters punched him, which was, I mean. To be, to be totally fair. Kaylin's like, yes, I have a brother. Kaylin's like, I have a brother. We know Kaylin for 130 episodes. Uh -huh. Kaylin disappears and Oren shows up the next day. So Emil's response emotionally was like, well, you're a little late. And then put... Before, well, before <laughs> Emil even knew him, he was like, you're late. Punched him. The others were probably because, yeah, he was... Did Rain punch him? I want to say Devanya did but I can't remember for sure. I'm pretty sure it was more than just Galathor and Emil, but... Why did Galathor find him? I think I was gone. Galathor was the was the morning after we met Oren. Thank you and for It was the something cheers. that was being said over breakfast. It might have been referring to Blueberry as it and not he, but it, it may have been something else also. I can't remember. Polyhedral, thank you for the three bits. For the three cheers, appreciate it. We're trying to remember, Frank, who all has punched Oren. I think it was I think, Neil Galathor and someone. Because I think 
Uh, Rain punched him at one point. Yeah, Galathor was a uh, chat challenge. <laughs> ah. <laughs> ah. But it was Galathor, right? It wasn't Garrick? Yeah, it was Galathor. I'm pretty sure it was... Uh, yeah, Galathor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking Devanya. Uh, Devanya would be... I, I, okay, I thought it was Devanya too, because I thought... Uh, like at first, I thought at first Emil punched Orin and Devanya was like, took Emil aside and said, look, friend, you can't do that. And we went back inside and and Devanya met Orin and Devanya immediately went back on what she'd said and punched right. him. That's what I thought had happened. <laughs> I mean, Rain, it's not too late if you still want it. There's still time. I thought, I, oh, for some reason, I thought Rain had punched Orin in the face. Again, we'll ask Steph. Player scared to find. Ooh, ooh, that's just like, if you. For Halo, if you are any familiar with Critical Role, uh, that player pulled a kill with. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. That that reminds me of Brixie. No, rain falling from the sky. I pulled a key with. <laughs> Trent when I think. Was it Brixie who fell? Who fell from the sky? Yeah, at Zambora at the what's the University Mage College? College. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Wizards College Jefferon. Oh, oh, that right. I remember rain turned and uh, not rain. Oh, I miss Brixie so much. But Brixie turned into an owl, I think, and then the Kaylin was chasing oh. after you. Oh yeah, because right, Brixie did not want to face Kaylin at all. That was that was an uh. interesting <laughs> night. That was an interesting night. The great magic broom uh, escapades. Oh my gosh, oh, that geez. was wild. <laughs> Is this at the, the university? Yeah, yeah when, we're Kaylin, talking about... when Kayla was chasing after Brixie. And, Br and Brixie did not know that the wizard had true sight, and so mm. they just spelled the mag magic. And then I pulled a keyleth. And fell like hundreds of like I I yeah. think it was like 150 feet. Yeah, something like that. You're up pretty yeah. high to get up over there. Yeah. I was so worried. Well, I mean, she eventually did, I guess, but that Kalen was going to watch, <laughs> you know, Brixie like fall to her death. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but hey, I did not say we were gold. I was the golden god. <laughs> it's true. You didn't. Yeah, it wasn't an overinflated <laughs> sense of yeah. Ba -ba! <laughs> No, that was Ashley who mentioned the Golden God, not Marisha. She just basically said oh, that yeah. it's fine, we're gods. And then it was Ashley who coined the Golden God term. <laughs> now I think about that. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Woo. Red Bull. Red Bull has been my friend tonight. Oh, good. And Sour Patch Kids. Mm. Ed, that's uh, Dan. That's very audible. Just ah, the water. Sorry. Just... Yeah, <laughs> that's the dream of water. <laughs> uh, just for numbers' sake, free fall only lasts one minute. So Ooh. if you fall more than six hundred feet, oh damn! You've you got another fall. Yeah, it only lasts one minute and slows you to sixty feet a second or sixty feet around. So, okay. oh gosh, oh gosh. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's basically more than 600 feet. Mm -hmm. What would be my mm -hmm. well, um, more than 600 feet, then you start falling back at the normal rate. Warren, what would be my enemy? Red Bull and Ch Sour Patch Kids? Oh, <laughs> yep. well, we'll see. Be your friend now, but in a couple of hours, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh yeah, give it time to process. Yeah. <laughs> I've already had acid reflux. So okay. No, no, no. Well, I mean, not just that. I mean, there's other other things to be considered. E yeah. Eating a bunch of gummies uh, can lead to all sorts of wonder. I mean, maybe you'll be fine. I'm so sure you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. They're not sugar free, are they? You're not. 
Oh god, it's the worst. <laughs> Beans. Never eat sugar-free gum. Look, they're sour patch kids. I'm sure you're fine. Yes. You're not in your 30s It'll yet. It'll be fine. It's okay. Don't remind me of my age, Steph. I'm just oh, saying that you're not in your 30s yet. <laughs> I'm not. I mean, I'm reminding you, you're still young. No, I'm not. I, okay. <laughs> uh, then I'm ancient. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know. There's four people here that completely disagree with you. <laughs> Two especially. Two um, could probably double you. Well, mm, I could double you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Falling. I feel like I need to have this ready. Uh, it's, it's D6 for every 10 feet. Okay. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I thought it was in my DM screen here, but I just I just don't see it. It's emblazoned in my head since, yeah, it's critical. <laughs> nice, yeah. Yeah, d- d- Matt had to use a, a, calcu- a d- <laughs> dice roller on his phone. He couldn't, there wasn't. Oh, yeah. <gasps> right. <gasps> And it was on Marisha's birthday because I remember exactly because it was right after the fi- the fight that uh, the illusion that uh, Pike's family did just to trick everybody. Yeah. I uh, remember that. Oh it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was at right. the top of the. I think the Matt had to <clears throat> call it before they could re- resolve it, and yeah. then. Marisha had the smart idea of just free falling because she wanted to see if Keila could do the Pocahontas dive. Mm-hmm. So, oh, I'm gonna put our video back on too, even though cool. I, I think we might still be waiting on a couple of folks. But video's back up. Anybody have questions uh, for us? Nice polyhedral. This is the time where you can <laughs> ask your questions. Yeah. Yep. There's a boatload of fun. I just want if there it is. Oh. <laughs> just a second. Oh. So this this um Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> you can blame Vex for the free fall. I forgot about that. Mm. All for green wanted that for gem. Halo for... <laughs> said all for green wanted that gem. Meaning Vex wanted that gym because they threw the gym. Oh yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's his really yeah. got in the way. Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. Oh, Emil, do you while while the last uh, couple people come back, is there a particular way that um <clears throat> you wanted to head down here? Down the chasm? Uh Mort has a carpet out, there's still room on that. And of course you can be a swarm of bats if you Do we have a, a solid determination as to whether or not the, we can fly down there in an hour? Uh, it'll be, well, seven hours by climbing, so three and a half uh, at 30 feet fly speed, if you can go a little faster. Um, I can sort it out. I can I can do the math. It's 12. Uh, 12... Yeah, because if it's three and a half hours, I think I'm going to be a swarm of bats for an hour, so I don't think that's uh, okay. Really good enough. I'll double check that, but I think that's what it is. Okay. Plenty yeah, I think you're right. I think it's an hour. Yeah. On air, Mort. <laughs> Currently, it's only Mort and Mort, Orin, and Blueberry on the carpet. Uh, and that, oh, and and Garrick, who's ready to yes. he looks ready to jump. <laughs> you got to keep goggles. an eye off. <laughs> He's got the goggles on of the parachute, <laughs> sitting very nervously on the, on the carpet. <laughs> As he shared that, uh, yeah, he may use his feather fall there. Ooh. <clears throat> I'm honestly, I'm genuinely surprised that everyone isn't just uh, climbing down with the safety of the... the Arm was ready to. He was getting his gear out. <laughs> just a little DM insight. It's like, oh, okay, but you never know. Was, you never know. I, was like, I, don't know I was just imagining how many dex checks was coming up. Mm, nice, nice. <laughs> so neat. You mean you guys can't walk up walls? <laughs> I mean, yes, oh, nice. but I didn't know if they would get slippery. <laughs> you can't walk up slippery walls? No, not with my slippers. Oh, it's in the name, I see. <laughs> slippery, slippery. <laughs> slippery. Primary slippery. function is slipping. Yes. 
Nice. So if you were to walk down, Emil, it would take you, if you were just to go at a walking pace, it'd be, you know, three and a half hours, because that's 30 feet, you know, per six seconds. If you were to dash, then, of course, that would be, you know, half of that. So an hour and 45 minutes or whatever that would be. Oh, with your spider club. Yeah. Mm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, thank you for, thank the, you for the, the raid. raid. Yeah. Break all the things. How nice. Glad to have you here with us. <laughs> Make all the things. Give you a shout out here. Proper shout out. Thank you so much. Yeah. By daylight. Nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, we're just jumping back from break. I think this is a good time to pick it up. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I'm, do you have a, a preference in meal on how you would like to travel down then? Well, I'm in the suit of everybody else is doing, but it's it's if some of us need to climb, then I think Emil will just you know, put both feet on the cliff face and just start walking down at a pace to stay with whoever is climbing or, okay. you know, we need to try and stick somewhat together. But <laughs> Yeah. Currently, everyone's flying. Um, Aaron, Rain is riding with Aaron Wynn on her nightmare steed. Blueberry, Orin, and Mort are on, and Garrick. Sorry, Garrick. I don't know why I keep forgetting that you're on the carpet. Or on the carpet. Devani has wings that are the, the large bat wings that just remain... On her person as long as she wants them to so she's flying down with that so basically i'm gonna be the slow one sounds like <laughs> i mean you could i think if you were running down the face of the wall you would keep up or go a little faster i think the carpet can only go 30 feet mm -hmm. per round with people on so if well that, that sounds walk, like my walking pace so mm -hmm. as long as i'm walking They'll be flying near me. It sounds like so like that's like a reasonable thing. Okay. All right. So you you know you just kind of walk down the walk face of the rock face and start heading on down. All right. Um <clears throat> so as Devanya takes flight and, and you know flies in and out and around to keep up pace, everyone else is on the carpet. Garrick, are you sticking to the carpet plan for now? Okay, neat, neat. <laughs> All right, uh, we begin our trek down the cliff face, a 12-mile descent into the sunken kingdom of Thalaria. Uh, <clears throat> everyone is you know, using their own means of flight. Um, Mort, how far away from the cliff wall, the face of, of the cliff, are you keeping the carpet? Close at all, or are you going way out? Um... probably close like you know so if there should be a mishap someone would not fall you know they would fall to the and hopefully they could be able to you know hoping it doesn't happen but unless it's you know, yeah. <laughs> no he, he, he's under he understands um <laughs> so yeah just no he's not gonna go out to the middle where it's like nothing but air underneath him you know, it, he'll just try to stick, you know, as close to the walls as possible. Okay. Avoid. If a mishap should occur, someone falling, they have at least a chance not to fall too far and to grab onto something on the way down. Okay. Um, maybe like 20 feet uh, distance to, or... <laughs> Sixteen point seven five feet away from the wall. <laughs> nice. Okay. <laughs> awesome. All right. <clears throat> um, you begin to head down and down and down. You probably get a good. Uh, let's see. Uh, not too far. Maybe about uh, an hour and a half down. Um, can everyone make a perception check? Uh, you descend. Or anyone that feels they would be on perception check. Yeah, yeah, any pretty one that, that feels like they would be generally keeping anything. So, oh, gosh, Emil. I think I think Emil would definitely be being perceptive because he's just he's just walking. Mm. So, mm. I mean, I realize it's vertical, but mm. it's twenty nine for Aaron. Okay, sixteen. Right, nice. What are we rolling? Uh, perception. Perception. Mm -hmm. A couple of things you'll notice as you fly down: the wind. The wind 
dies out and then it picks up with a with a intensity um and gusts your uh carpet and your horses and other things to and fro here and there um, well if, if i start to sense those gusts i will move away a little bit so the gust doesn't throw us into the wall okay back or up. into me yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice i got a 22 perception okay so um emil most definitely sees this um <clears throat> let's see and mort and erinwin and Orin. i uh, um as you're heading down mm -hmm. just looking for the image You spot climbers. Now they're no longer living, but um, something happened to them. Let me try and zoom in here a little better. You can see there, there are uh, pedons and ropes and stuff still hammered into the face of the cliff. They're strung together with one another. Uh, I'm going to start moving over to some imagery here. So I'm going to switch to our other little. <clears throat> All right. uh, yes, these poor individuals hang lifelessly. Clearly, an expedition gone wrong. Um, there, they look like maybe they only passed uh, within the last week. Um, <clears throat> some of their clothing still uh, doggy. I, would I think Emil them. would probably walk over and mm -hmm. do some investigation. Okay, see if you can figure out what happened. Sure, they won't come back to life. <laughs> probably, probably <laughs> safer than bringing the carpet too close as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I see Emil stop, I'll, I'll pause, like you know, like thirty feet off the cliff walls, just to mm -hmm. observe what Emil's doing. And okay, yeah, same. Excellent. All right. Yes, you do indeed see him doing so. And as you go, oops, you go to take a more careful look, you find the same grisly scene. Um, the corpse is beginning to <clears throat> give way to nature here, um, dangling in different directions from the face of the cliff. It appears, Emil, with your investigation check, that um, <clears throat> you can tell there's certain erosion points here. Apparently, you know, every so often, as it either rains up above or the temperature rises and the snow begins to melt this time of year, it creates the equivalent of a flash flood that drains down the side of this cliff. Um, these individuals were, you can see some marks where they were just bashed with this water and up against the cliff face. They were just not prepared for this, um, fortunately. Okay, well, Emil will lay that to people on the carpet and just, you know, ask them to keep an eye and an ear out above. We shouldn't really be in danger as long as we, you know, spot something coming, because we can all get off the wall if we need to. I wonder why people were coming down here. what i'm interested in well we know we know people have kind of come up and down here before the, the expeditions do come to the sunken kingdom maybe they were merchants maybe they're explorers pilgrims got it do they have any tools or otherwise shiny things i was going to say that <laughs> Uh, they have, you can see climbing gear, but you might, they have packs that are sealed up. You might have to go into their packs if you prefer. Which we'd use uh, your investigation role for if you want it. Yeah, I think, I think Emil will do that. He'll just be cautious about it. I mean, Emil's broken into people's packs before. He'd be a little bit cautious for arcane seals or, <laughs> or anything of that nature. This is, this is Emil's first rodeo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. nice, nice. Okay, uh, you very carefully um, navigate the backpacks and, and entering in to see what's in there. Um, you find um, <clears throat> rations, 
Um, one of them has some waterlogged uh, notes. It looks like it's pretty, the ink is pretty blurred out, but it looks like maybe they were planning an excavation of some, some goods down here, uh, sort of like treasure hunters. Uh, things reported uh, reportedly down in the Kingdom of Solari back from, you know, 150 some years ago. The getting is good if you can go find your way down and, and you think you know where some you know, <clears throat> boop, and it's a form of treasure, some national treasure or otherwise may have been and where, where it landed with. Can Emil get any, like, if, if Emil can like, put anything together that might give identity or even like they came from a certain town or city, then Emil would kind of file a way to perhaps try and send word back mm. at some point that the expedition was at least spotted on where. So, but. Yeah. Don't need to go further than that because I don't think any of that really pertains to our adventures. So I'll just okay. kind of relay that, presumably Garrick asks, and I'll okay. Emil will shout an answer and then kind of return everything as it was. Right. So um, everyone continues on then. Mm -hmm. okay. And down we go. Further and further, it's about an hour and a half down out of your seven-hour descent. Um, let's see. What's every, anyone doing anything in particular or everyone's just focused on flying further down? Are there birds? Uh, there are. Um, mm -hmm. every so often some birds seem to swoop down this low. It's getting, uh, you know, certainly dark at this point. Um, and, uh, much more difficult to see if you do dark vision, starting to escape some of the, uh, getting dark it looks it feels even though it's not quite that time of day it feels like it's approaching twilight so it feels like the middle of winter is what you're saying <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> uh all right no one's doing anything in particular yeah i guess oh. arn would just try to keep an eye out on the surroundings like especially going down and around them just to make sure that mm. nothing's like coming towards them Nothing yet. Um, hmm. Well, let's see how what's the range. Um, hold on. I just want to check something real quick. Sure. Uh, oh, yeah, plenty. All right, so I'll go over to Emil uh, uh, asking how's his vision. Can he see what, what's going on with the twilight approaching? Do you want the in character or out of character answer? In character, please. Um, I can see quite. I can see quite well in the dark, so um, possibly better than most. Okay. So I'm I'm not having a problem with the footing as yet. All right. Let me know if you do. I'll throw you some light if you need it. And we'll continue then. <clears throat> Neat. I uh, continue down. You reach a point about uh, just over two hours uh, of the trip down, uh, where there's a bit of a plateaued section. So thankfully, nobody jumped. Uh, there's a little tiny plateau, and you can see that there have been people in the past that have set up little campfires here. They have, uh, you know, um, basically set up camp and rested here. Um, there is, uh, off the side of this little plateau area, duck in, dug into, um, the base of the cliff is about, uh, a three foot relief, three and a half foot relief. It's about, uh, you know, three and a half feet in, maybe, um, four feet tall or so. And the base of it, uh, is a concave in shape sort of like a slide um and it goes down to the distance those of you that are watching uh through um light can see it just sort of it, it seems to maintain a particular pitch as it kind of it looks like a slide in the oops and hit the microphone <laughs> and, uh, dug into here at one point emil uh since you're walking down here you'll see near the top there's a wooden sign near the where this begins um 
and uh, it's been broken. The top half is is missing, uh, or top portion anyway. You just see this this bottom portion that is written in common, certain death, and a little arrow pointing at this slide like thing. Okay. Yeah, I assume everyone's continuing with honors. Does anyone need a break here on the plateau or anything? We're good. Okay. Downward you go. You continue, you continue. Um, <clears throat> you get another, let's see, about, what, three and a half hours down. You get to about five hours down out of seven. The... I mean, it's like a long road trip, right? <laughs> it's I just going. Thought it was, uh, I thought it was going to take a lot less than seven hours because we were half, flying. Yeah. Yeah, oh, half. okay, right, 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 right. Okay, I'll re-divide the thing. Then, yeah, <laughs> you're about six, eight, you're three quarters of the way down, <laughs> and. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I'll mm -hmm. as as we get to the point where it's like mostly darkness, mm -hmm. I'll summon my light balls, my dancing oh, lights. Okay, nice, nice light bulbs go. Uh, okay, uh, you dance those out. And yeah, just kind of have them go around. Okay. Um, yeah, it's pretty dark here. If you have dark vision, you can see. If you don't, you can't. Um, however, thanks to Erwin's dancing lights, they do dance around. Are you keeping them around you or near the wall at all or a meal or anything? <clears throat> um, probably just like, well, I mean, I'd look at like Mort and Devanya because I think both, both of them could make lights too. So it's like, if you guys want to make some light, then if not, it'll just kind of be more like centered to where we all are, if that makes sense. Are and cast dancing lights. Hey. Okay. And I'm sorry, did anyone have any over near Emil on the on the rock face? Yeah, like I'll I'll oh. keep like if we're if we're if the the carpet's here and mm -hmm. we're here on the horse and Emil's here on the wall, I'll keep my lights like in the middle. Right. I'll, I'll and I'll spread them out as far as they can go so everybody has like a little bit of light. Okay. Somewhat cuz I think okay. there's some of us who can't see in the dark. Possibly. It's tough to tell now. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so you're heading down. Um, Emil, can you make a perception check for me, please, if you would? Yep. yep. Ooh, nice. Okay. <laughs> um, you hear what sounds like um, there, there have been a number of birds flying around back and forth. Uh, but you hear the sound of, of uh, it feels like maybe a wounded bird, a rather large bird that's that's wounded. Um, it's making a lethal sound as though it's been hurt uh, some 100, 150 feet further down. <clears throat> okay. Um, so a couple of things quickly. Are we talking um, like a raptor sized large or are we talking like a rock or a house oh. sized large bird or like a humanoid a size. sword dinosaur okay yeah, humanoid yeah, size. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. so larger larger than a raptor but not mm -hmm. like terrifyingly large yeah <laughs> okay um the other thing is that emil's dark vision is 120 feet so oh okay emil will um let the party know that he hears something and maybe try and get within say a hundred feet and use the dark vision to see what he sees. All right. Uh, well, you, as you're looking down the rock face, um, you, you see, let me zoom way in on this. <clears throat> um, <laughs> there we go. I'll have to do. Um, <clears throat> and Eric Okra. Yes, a wounded Aracogra on the left side. And um, of course, they don't can't necessarily speak the way everyone else does, but you can hear. Uh, you see them sort of resting in a, very precariously on, on, a, on a, some rocks that are jutting out. One of its wings uh, seems to be hurt in some way. Uh, 
Um, hmm. How to approach this? I guess Emil will call out in common, not this is going to work, but it'll at least send the message up above that Emil's not concerned that, uh, are you wounded? Do you need help? Like he'll call it out loudly enough that mm. everybody will be able to hear it. You hear um, the air Kokra simply repeat, help, help. Who's he talking to? You're muted, Frank. Oh, we can't hear you. There you go. Oh. Mortal point to the wall. To Move the my lights over. Mm. Oh. Yeah, let's let's just let's just fly down. I don't I don't I'll keep Emil will keep an eye open for danger, but as long as the Aarakocra doesn't get spooked by our approach in the lights, then we'll just slowly approach it. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. You continue down, and you do see as you get closer that this uh, poor Aarakocra has indeed been wounded um, <clears throat> in its left wing. And uh, is in need of some some uh, assistance if uh, if now is the time and place to give it. <laughs> um, I'm gonna ask Yarwin to fly down to where I can examine it to see what is wrong. I'll get closer. Bring bring my steed, my mare, nightmare, mm, in I closer. I think Emil will start with a healing word from range. We can still get closer, but the healing word might be the better diplomatic essay than anything else we try. So That's I'll just true. I'll throw a level one healing word as we approach. To all right, as you do, a uh, little bit of that, uh, brightness of the healing magic as it covers the wing begins to heal it up, uh, <clears throat> and you can see uh, the the bird snap to a little more. It's a little more. Uh, um, coherent it seemed to have been due to the pain a little out of it but seems to be healing up that wing uh, as Aaron when you come around how would you like to approach Aaron when they're seeing that are you are you keeping a bit of a distance uh yeah I'll get uh how windy is it at this point currently the wind has died down now that you've gotten down past a certain point it doesn't seem very strong Okay, um, Rain, how close do you need to be? Uh, just to see if it has any, like, injured, like, noticeable injuries. So whatever you feel comfortable with. I'll get within 30 feet, 20 feet, 20 feet. 20 feet is fine. You get within about 20 feet, you see that healing magic from Emil healing up a wound in its wing it's it's healed um actually a good bit i mean not that you know how bad it was before but it looks like it's done a pretty good job so far but there's still okay. a wound in its left wing um can i make it a handle handle <laughs> air cook air cook are a race if they're a race so it wouldn't be human it wouldn't be animal handling mm -hmm. oh i'm i'm still gonna sing my hand now okay so Rain wouldn't know that, so mm. Rain's just going to think it is just another animal. All right. I'm picturing a funny, like, cinematic moment where, like, you reach your hand out, and then, like, there's a close-up on, on the air croaker looking, and then back to your hand, and it's hand in. And, but then we just cut out, and we see there's, like, 20 feet between the two of you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> it kind of, you know, looks over and uh, seems to be coming to a certain amount of lucidity. It tries to prop itself up and just look down and, and look back up at you. And... Help? Okay. Um, is there, like, a little edge? Like, I could just mm. ask Aaron to just... It's pretty narrow, but there is a little bit of space next to it uh, by its feet. First off, how big is this? It's about the size of a human. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Erwin, how do you feel about getting a little, like maybe 15 feet? Just so I can bandage the wing? Why don't we, why don't we heal spell first? If, if we can sp sp well, cure works, healing with it, touching him or her, that might be the safest all around. Hang on. I mean, yeah, Emil just... would offer to heal, but if you Emil isn't I think that, that Yeah, that. <laughs> that's true. Hang on. Um, da, 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 da. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you just, you can, you can heal, right? Oh. You know what? I'm just going to do it. Do I have to be? I have to be in, yeah, I have to be in range touch. I'm going to do cure wounds, but I have to be in range touch. You I have to be Aaron in touch and range. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to let it. It's All right. The left just, wing. Okay, I'll, I'll like pat the, <laughs> pat, pat the nightmare and just be like, hey, you got this, buddy? We'll get a little, just kind of ease closer. Okay, while she, um, Erwin eases it, I'm just going to like, should just do like a graze and t like grace touch uh -huh. just to be in range touch sure. which it has to be uh, da, da, da. Well, what if it doesn't say as long as like, you're touching it it's good yeah okay cool the nightmare trots over at a trot it flies up next to it yeah <laughs> a okay. flight trot a flight version of trot <laughs> And um, you arrive next to it as best it can. Um, okay. Um, and I just cast Cure Wounds. Hey. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to say, since you've uh, been doing this a while as a cleric, you'd know mm -hmm. first or second level is probably enough to finish healing this one. Okay. I was going to say a higher level, but I'm going to do second. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. No problem. <laughs> You pour this uh, healing uh, energy into the Aarakocra and its wing kind of bends back into a more natural way and uh, the gash that it had in its wing seems to heal up as well just blood behind um, <clears throat> and the Aarakocra sits up and uh, stands on this little rocky stony perch um, and kind of looks at each of you And just says, um, Nari, Nari, Nari. Yep, and takes flight upward out of the out of the canyon chasm. Oh, it's like trying to say sorry. Rain just thinking in her in their head. Oh, they're saying sorry, but they can't say sorry. Okay, that makes sense. And this is all in Rain's head. All right. Apparently, a lot of people find this place interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. <clears> hey. <throat> right. Yeah. Anything else? Or are you all just looking to get down to the bottom of this? You have like forty minutes left, so you continue your journey down, and finally, finally, you arrive at the very base of this um <clears throat> this entire kingdom that is again sunken into the ground here <clears throat> where are we i want this one okay um along the edges uh did i share this one out along the edges this is sort of a vibe you get from the darkness down here Um, there are certain sections that are hollowed out more than others, but there is a clear way. It's not quite as, as, uh, bad as this. There is a clear path to walk to head further into the kingdom. You have rested at the base of this and you're ready to enter down into, through the kingdom. You have about two weeks left before the ritual starts and probably pretty close to that to get there. Maybe, uh, I think you have like a day to spare or if you travel to normal base. Anything you want to do before heading 
your dear friend Kaylin? Probably have to wait on Warren, right? Since he was walking down the. Thing. I was walking. Emil was walking at the same speed that you guys were flying. Mm -hmm. Okay. My walk speed is like thirty-five. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. This is a cozy place. At least it's not the woods. I would rather have the word, the woods, my friend. Yeah, but the woods keeps us further away from Kalen, so. <sighs> well, are we ready to uh, move on or do we need to take a rest here? I'm feeling kind of energized, but. Maybe that's just the darkness. I don't know. I'm attacking the darkness. <laughs> I take it it's, it's more of a casual walk down. No more lifts or anything like that. Correct. There's some divots, some places to keep an eye out for. Um, <clears throat> but otherwise, it's just a lot of stone and rock here. The darkness. I'll, I'll give my, my nightmare pets and feed it some snacks and then dismiss it. Jumps into its black hole. How's the lighting here, Dan? Uh, it's dark. There are some wisps of, of some sort of energy here that illuminate areas at times, but nothing consistent. Arn will keep the his dancing lights up above the party. You said there's like wisps of energy? Yes, like wisps. Uh, um, like spirits, maybe? You, uh, as you look around, um, <clears throat> let's see. Right, right here, just... you definitely would spot some spirits for sure. There's a lot of people that have not made it successfully down here. Um, it looks like a bunch of people in climbing gear and other things, just sort of either grumbling or it looks like they're they're hovering maybe four or five feet all over the ground and falling, free falling, free falling. It looks like they're just in that terror of falling to their death. No. Nope. Uh, just just rain, just rain, because she can she can they can see that. Mm -hmm. Uh and Emil he has his cloak on. Um I'm just gonna say we need to to the group, we need to be careful here. I see a lot of spirits and from my understanding, it looks like this is the stopping point from most travelers who've tried to travel through here. All right, Ward will fold up the carpet and start following Ornan if they're leading the way. Sure. Hmm. Right. Who, so Ornan's leading the way? Oh, well, I mean, he would start to, but he would kind of fall back uh, to get in stride with Aaron Wynn hmm. at one point. Okay. Um, I feel like Rain would be up in the front just just to make sure they don't see any more ah. spirits. Callie's does, anybody, does anybody not have some level of dark vision at this point? Uh, I think Rain does. Blueberry. Because I, I think Summer we all do. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm 120. Yeah. Blueberry most definitely does not have. I, no, oh, no, 60 vision. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 60 yeah. vision uh, for rain. Okay. Or 60 foot. Nice. And blind sight. And blind sight. Does the, does the, does the golem come anywhere close to us? <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, where is the golem, by the way? Have we uh, seen that? Nothing or yet. Or seen pieces of it? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yet. Oh, is, is, so. Look at the stone around us. Is it obsidian? <laughs> <laughs> no obsidian currently. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So as you begin to set out, um, or you slow pace at one point to match pace with or. Uh, uh, apologies for earlier. I. Let my anger get the better of me uh, and my fear get the better of me. And I, I just, uh, 
you know, I find uh, the closer and closer we get, the more out of sorts I feel. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, yes, I, you'd think I would know better knowing more about magic. And funnily enough, there was a, a ghost story that I heard where, you know, the same sort of thing happened where they summoned a monster by accidentally thinking about it. Hmm. Um, uh, so, yeah, that was completely unintentional, but, you know, sh I'm hmm. positive she'll be fine. Hmm. I hope so. I'll have to it'll, take your word on it. And it'll be nice to have, you know, a gigantic golem on our side. Sure, as long as it stays on our side. Absolutely. I don't s see why it wouldn't. Again, I'll take your word on it. Sometimes you have to look at the positive side of life or else you're going to start crying. <laughs> no, I understand that. I concur. Uh, I can definitely agree with that statement. Uh, Yes, um, but right, I didn't mean, well, maybe at the time I didn't, but it's definitely cooled off since then, and I'm not angry with you or anything. You, I think probably what spurred it the most is I had just been thinking, or the thought had just occurred to me, well, because my original thought was Yathaz, and then I started thinking, well, if Kaylin, if, if Yathaz is inhabiting my sister, then that could make her a target. And then as soon as I thought that, the word slipped out of your mouth. And then the golem responded. And uh, yes. so uh, A series of unfortunate events. I yes. Think. Yes, it was. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize that the ad uh, would be that I was still listening um <laughs> yeah yes. uh, thank you thank you for apologizing um i am sorry too for not being more careful <laughs> um but yeah i i appreciate that if the golem could read thoughts i'm sure we all were thinking it so yeah i mean it's you know our current objective correct um but yeah yeah uh yeah. Thank you. Also, I'm sorry. Nothing to be sorry about. No, it's fine. We will it will either fix itself or we will fix it, or maybe Kaylin will, but we'll see. And um you know, even th so this is this is gonna sound callous. But speaking from my current, my most recent experience, mm -hmm. e even if her body is destroyed, so long as Kaylin's soul is still all right, we can bring her back. And we will bring her back. Hey. But who is to say if her soul will still be all right? I think that's one thing that... You possibly... haven't really talked to her recently, have you? <laughs> I... And he'll kind of lower his voice a bit. Uh, I haven't seen my sister since... If... It's been maybe about 30 years. No, closer to 40. What's your last memory of her? The day I left. The day I left the, the home. Uh, our parents. How, how was she? Was she kind of young, inexperienced? <laughs> Kaylin was always curious and uh, a bit annoying at times 
Uh, <laughs> that sounds like younger siblings. Yes, I will agree with that. <laughs> she didn't understand my youthful <sighs> anger at the entire situation. You see, taking care of her put our parents in a very precarious position that lost them a lot of power at the time in the clan. So I, of course, missed that life of privilege and was angry about it. Because at Doral, it was for just a dwarf child. Uh, <laughs> uh, she didn't understand that and tried to befriend me throughout the time I was there and uh, while we were growing up and I, well, I'm sad to say that I wasn't very kind to her. I wasn't cruel, but I was as close to cruel as you could be to a sibling. So yes, my last memory is of me probably seeing her the morning that I left because I didn't look back as I was leaving, unfortunately. Well, I'm glad you're here now. You definitely have had a change of heart, so I think that's good. <laughs> and she is a lot stronger than you think. She's a lot stronger than I think she herself knows. From the stories that I have heard, which is while being here, uh, I don't doubt it. And have some faith in your sister. I do have faith in her now. It's and have for a few years, but I the thing that I don't have faith in is Yathaz and what he is capable of. Well, to be honest, you haven't really seen what we're capable of either. Oh, I'm not saying that I fear that we will lose to him. I'm No, I know what I know what you mean though. You're afraid that he'll use Kaylin as leverage against us. That and I fear of what has happened in the meantime and how it will affect her. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say that negative experiences don't have an impact on uh, who you are as a person because <laughs> I didn't used to be like this crazy. Um, so I'm sure it'll change her in ways that none of us will probably be able to understand. There may be one person who might be able to understand, but um, still, I think the, the best we can do is rescue her, which we are going to do. Again, I will take your word on that. Someone has to be confident. <laughs> yes, and he will chuckle at that. You are right. Um, thank you, Erin. Yeah. It's been a good chat. Yeah, we haven't really chatted before, have we? Mm, probably not since that day going up to Kaylin's room when, you know, when I was still uh, oh. recovering from the patches <laughs> of the day before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, you have to admit that was funny, though. I came in strong. <laughs> mm -hmm. It was great. And no offense, but it was hilarious. I've never seen a male punch someone like that before. He had a good punch. It was surprising. Mm -hmm. Given his frame, I didn't suspect it. Uh, I wouldn't have suspected it. I didn't suspect it because I didn't really see it happening until I <laughs> turned around and... <laughs> and there was a fist in your face. And there was a fist in my face. Uh, well, <laughs> still. I'm glad we're not punching you anymore. 
it's the day is still young, Aaron. <laughs> Hey, that means you developed as a character, though, right? You're less of a jerk. She'll just like <laughs> laugh and like nudge him. Hmm. <laughs> he'll he'll chuckle. He'll chuckle. If only that were true. <laughs> <laughs> At least outwardly. <laughs> You're funny. Oh, thank you. Hey, if it makes you feel any better, I know the whole thing about being ostracized too. I mean, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I would so. never suspect that, honestly. <laughs> you seem like a very outgoing person. Like I said, I wasn't always this way. <laughs> Got it. Time changes us. Time, mm-hmm. torture, yeah. So look at sure. the person you are now. Slightly insane, but it's lots of fun. <laughs> Maybe slightly insane, but also a good person, and one. Thanks. And you're clearly the life of this party. And he'll kind of look around and smirk and like look back at her and smile. I mean, mm. someone has to be. <laughs> Don't they? <laughs> if I wasn't here, it'd be drama, drama, drama all the day long. <laughs> yes, yes. I. Well, every group needs com- comedic relief. This is true. This is true. But you are more than that. And he'll continue walking. Mm. After and we'll just kind of like scuff the crown shyly a little bit. Just... <laughs> oh, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. And then keep walking. <laughs> nice. Uh, you lead on and uh, heading in the direction that you believe you are needed to head based on information passed along from Brewer. Um, about 45 minutes into your walk, you come across, um, a fairly obvious path that this obsidian elemental has left, uh, some of that torn up rock and other, other such, or you can assume anyway, that that's, that's what it's fresh. Uh, it's about that width. It seems to be, you know, ahead of you by a decent bit now, but it's left this kind of destruction in its, this path, lightly giving you a pretty keen idea which way to go. Well, that's convenient. Yes. Right. I mean, it was a complete accident, but you got to admit, this is convenient. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it seems to be slightly off from where your directions would take you. I mean, it's effectively the same direction, but just, you know, slightly different. Um, you know what? I wonder if it can, I want, you know what? It could probably go through the walls. So it can probably just take the most direct path. So we might not want to follow it exactly. Maybe the ancient story of the Kool-Aid man. (laughs) (laughs) Oh yeah. (laughs) The large bulbous creature that would just go through walls. At any given moment, it could get you. <laughs> yes. We have. We don't mention its name. It was red, I believe. Yes, the red, the red, and then the big grin, right yes, as it came yes. for your soul. It always grinned, according to, Ooh, the, yeah. to the old tales. <laughs> uh, that is troubling, and I think you have a good point. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All right, uh, you, you sort of uh, following your own map and directions. So I mean, it's fairly within sight as you're as you're moving along, and you tend to kind of cross over its path and then come back across it again every so often in your walk. About a half a day's walking. Let's see, you came down here. It's probably around four or so uh, in the afternoon now. Um, you find that <clears throat> all of the stone uh, turned into. Um, or the terrain rather became a bit sloshy. There's a fair bit of water that was pooling up. Uh, and then you even encountered some other 
uh, wildlife. Some you heard some creatures um, running about, little tiny creatures, frogs and and other small uh, things, insects even um, start buzzing about, mosquito like as. Uh, uh, you can smell some stale water uh, as you're walking through. It begins, you know, pooling up down here. Um, but, but stale water and not running water, right? Correct. Ask the half vampire. Ah, nice. Yeah, <laughs> stale water, not running, definitely. <laughs> um, even come across an area that it, it, it begins to turn to swamp. Uh, there's some tree life here and there, but it becomes muddy, swampy. Um, <sighs> before heading into a, a thinned out forest area. It's more like broken down. At one point, this was probably a lush forest, uh, was, you know, century and a half ago. Now it's uh, oddly, you know, the trees don't have light to grow up to, so they seem to chase whatever these wisps of light are. So they kind of grow in all wonky directions, um, chasing that light. Uh, but again, this makes for an easy, I'm going to share an image here, um, a fairly easy uh, path, the uh, visible, highly visible path that the <laughs> elemental has taken as it, a number of these things are broken up. We're now in a bit of a marshy kind of area down here. <clears throat> Do I see any more spirits? Um, none around here. No, there were a lot in that first area. Uh, but nothing really since. Aaron, will, Aaron will look down the down the obvious path, and then she'll kind of. This is the way. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Nice. nice. <laughs> Thank you, Mando. Uh, um, Aaron's going to uh, before they get into the marshes and the swamp is going mm -hmm. to stop and remove his slippers and put them back in his bag. Okay. Um, and uh, and uh, continue on. That's all. all right. <clears throat> Don't um, want to get them dirty. Nice. <laughs> all right, they're packed up nicely. You begin, you know, trekking through this this muddy, marshy area. Uh, again, it's it's a it's like a different world because the the pressure down here, just the air pre the pressure of the air, is uh, much greater than it is up on the surface. So there's a compression in on your on your ears, lock pop up, uh, you know, lock up. Every so often, keep trying to pop your ears and, and everything. Um, it's much warmer. It's pretty hot. It's you know for us here, um, probably around a uh, hundred degrees, hundred and ten degrees. Um, it's pretty, pretty toasty compared to the winter chill that you came from up above. Um, <clears throat> the creatures down here seem to uh, have adapted to this, uh, but it makes them look, uh, easily distinguishable from their cousins up above on the surface. Uh, everything's a little bit alien down here. Um, uh, as mosquitoes and gnats buzz everywhere. Uh, around your faces, around uh, one another. Trek on. Uh, you you have another you know couple of hours before you know it's, it would be the typical camp time. Now there's no sun down here. It's just these wisps of light that that flare up in your own light and dark vision. Would you like to follow your usual routine of setting up camp evenings? Yeah. Right. Couldn't hear you, Frank, if you were saying something. Sounds like a good idea. I wonder. Hmm. Mm hmm. Anything for more, or just uh, making some considerations? We are definitely going to be keeping watch. Yes, of course. <laughs> Callie does not like it down here. Um, this this feels very strange this is i don't like it nothing no no more portals to the fey wild mm, potentially no um no nothing really feel like like there's there's the prime is, is maybe a little thin here but not to the prime not to the prime Ooh. 
Interesting. Um, once we've set up camp, yeah, that's what we're doing, right? Uh, if we're all just kind of together at some point, or we're just kind of, uh, so everyone, how is everyone feeling? Nervous. Hmm. I didn't think I could hate an environment more than the wood, but this gives it a run for its money. <laughs> I'm sure the wood will be happy to hear that, Garrick. I miss Felix's pastries. Mm. <laughs> Blueberry slot. Talk. 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 <laughs> oh. Oh no, I think one of us would have Especially carried like blueberry. This. I definitely yeah. would have carried blueberry. Oh, yeah. He wouldn't have to. He'd be like up to his chin in the mud. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm carrying blueberry. Oh, no, okay. not to have a puppy. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting tired of trail rations. That's all. Nice. A little less than two weeks. I'll I'll do this. Um you know, dividing it up by week and seeing what happens across the week. Is there anything y'all want to do tonight specifically in your first night down here? All right. I'll find some uh, time to, to talk to Oren, actually. Okay. okay. And, and Mort, just so I can cat put a pen in it. Did Mort have something as well? If they make camp, um, Mort will just go maybe... 20 30 to where it's dark away from the campfire if they've set a campfire and he'll pull out the bracers and drop them on the ground but if you want to do that you what you want to do at first uh, go ahead okay we'll jump back over oh. to gear gear you find Aaron, Aaron oh. you broke to... Ed. Oh. <laughs> It, just just saying it, that uh, but but okay. do, no, do, do their conversation uh, first um okay all right just don't <laughs> forget um that you've got something here <laughs> yeah um all right oh, well actually really yeah. quick uh -huh. are there any piece are there any like ruins around us or is it all just trees just trees current okay never mind then i don't have a thing oh okay all right um yeah you haven't come across you imagine at some point you definitely will though <clears throat> Um, all right, so Garrick, you find some time for talk to Orin, was it? Mm -hmm. Garrick kind of shuffles up, kicking the I guess the sludge. Garrick, so, yes. Uh, I'm thinking a little bit about what you said back there. And you're right. I probably am a little afraid. Not a not of the wood though. Just the situation in general. Um, yes, that's uh, understandable. I'm here because I have an agreement with uh, with Galathor. Yes. So you he's said. Gonna he's going to help out at my mom's shop so I can get out and see a little bit of the world, maybe set up my own shop. Nice. Um, his request that was that we, uh, well, was that I help out in getting Kaylin back. Okay. And I feel like that's best served by helping you. I think you're Kaylin's best shot. How so? Um, from what I've observed, the others have traveled with her for a really long time, but I don't think any of them has, have known her as long as you have. I think you have the most invested here. Uh... Yes, um, well, I, hmm. 
Eric, I think that you, uh, well, I appreciate uh, this uh, concern and this want for help. I, I think you misunderstand the situation I had with my sister. Uh, I haven't seen her for almost 40 years. I've barely, I haven't responded to her letters. I, I've had people, had people keeping up on her while I was uh, busy working uh, for the, uh, the guard, but these people, uh, and he'll kind of like motion to the group around them, uh, have been more to Kaylin than I have been possibly ever. At least in my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yet, despite that, you're still here. Yes, I, I am. Anyway, just just so you know, anything I can do to help, you've got it. No to Garrick, uh, thank you. You do your honor uh, well. You're a very honorable person, is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. I uh, try not to do things by half measures. Um, maybe something uh, tangible that can help you out. Oh, shoot. I actually can't do that yet. Whoops. I... I... Shoot, 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 shoot. This conversation hinged on that. <laughs> if you ever, if you ever think of anything, Garrick, uh, feel free to to let me know. I mean, I would never turn down a upgrade, or but uh, that's entirely up to you. Sounds good. Okay. Again, thank you. Anytime. Ed. Thanks for the save. <laughs> no, or the no fine print. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Nice. We're resting for the night, right? I think that's the plan. Yeah, it's it's at least the campfire set up and everything. That's where we're at, okay. I think. We're keeping Relu watch. Okay, reluctantly, Rain is going to take a full rest. And oh. yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. I'm reluctant. I'm reluctant as a player to do this, but I feel like as a character, Rain would definitely take a take a re proper rest after gotcha. so many trances. But okay, I don't know if this is a great player decision. Mm, nice. All right, so uh, now we're not going to jump over to. Mort, um, we can, we can, or you head off. Mm hmm. You take yeah, the there's bracers. a spot where it's dark. Mm hmm. Take the, the bracers out of the bag, set them on the ground. Just nervously, a little bit nervously look around mm -hmm. and say, Did you really think I would put these on without having a conversation with you? Beautiful. Uh, you don't seem to get a response as you say that. I'll wait maybe five minutes. If I don't get a response, I'll pick them up and put them back in the backpack. Let me do a quick roll. <clears throat> okay. um, you wait that first minute or so. Um, and you don't, you know, as you're waiting, you know, this, this darkened area, you're looking about and you didn't, you didn't quite catch it until now that it's been getting steadily darker. And no, no, this is definitely darker than before. 
And of course you can typically see uh, well in the dark, um, but everything falls to darkness except for what had previously just been part of the background uh, look like you know trees and swamp as everything else falls away you see it's almost as though previously camouflaged or something there stands a humanoid form standing about 13 and a half 14 feet tall or so um <clears throat> and the pieces of camouflage like a tree this and that just fall collapse to the ground are the only things visible and as they do that figure you've seen once before char stands before you about 25 feet away from them and begins very slowly methodically walking over to you but calls to you ah well question sort of like a uh, slink in her walk every so often um <clears throat> or a fast quick uh movement uh always the inquisitive ask you a question why me well why not why not? You have a great mind. Keen. Arcana. Careful. Tactical. If you know anything about me, you know you're not exactly my type. Ah, a misconception. A misconception. Presented by my sister by my twin cellular she would have all think that only those in the light are good and that all those in the dark are evil are you evil Mort? mortimer just because you were born in the darkness of the cave below the sun does this make you Choose our, we choose our destiny. We choose our path. But there is a great distance between what happens to the deity and what happens. It is easy to spread lies between one. You may think me, but I've only fought for those those of us that live in the darkness. Did you know Selune wished us not to have any men? The weave she created. And so I created the shadow weave. Give us men. Give us. The same that is given to all those in the light. I simply need to provide sometimes things must be done that are for the greater good those choices weigh heavily on me as they would any so Luna is not without me those same types of I seek you you stand out those in my room. You must have a question. Do you have a, a, a question you are? Itching that there must be some sense that at least the question burning. Uh, 
you're aware of what's going on. To some degree. Why are you getting involved? My interest is in you. That's coming and going. All those. And so much. If things take the course as they are set to, I do not wish to see those in my. Aid you. Well, I'm sure this isn't the first time it's happened. Uh, insight check, a god. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Go for it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Dan, FYI. Is it even uh, actually her? <laughs> your audio is cutting in and out for the stream. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. I think I was I was talking too quietly. Thank you. <laughs> I have it set to cut out now, so. Hey, 16. Ah, mm. uh, she seems to be, you know, being pretty honest. Uh, you know, she's not, it seems as though she's not just being like, I'm a good person, you know, but instead, like, I just have my own, you know, values. And some, uh, you know, she doesn't seem to be uh, being misleading at all with your role. I travel with those, with one who follows Mistra. Would that, would that put put me at odds? I will not force you. Exactly. If you accept my gift, there are no strings attached. Insight check. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Much better. 25. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. Um, uh, so she seems to be being fairly truthful. You get the feeling that while she means it, she means it and it wouldn't be she's going to force you to do anything, that, you know, there's probably something in between. Like she might ask, you know, requests of you. Things that, you know, again, you'd be able to deny because she, she won't force you to do anything. But she's not going to, it's beneath her to be like, no, you have to be, you know, you can't travel with this other person because, you know, of a different uh, ideology. If I refuse? I'm persistent. She gets about within 15 tracking. This more this. And she gestures over to the um, <clears throat> brazers. Is a taste. The sampling of a full course meal, if you will. To aid you in your pursuits and to show you the wonders of what can be done in assisting me. Helping learn more of the world, the multiverse, and all the arcane secrets with Helping preserve the shadow we and protect those that are unjustly judged simply for being different being born beneath beneath the ground in the darkness I've seen someone else fall to an offer 
that seem too good to be true. My answer is no. Stop and write a bit at full 14 foot height. We will see each other again one. Out into the darkness. The light comes up, your dark vision turns as normal. You're standing there, uh, you know, down on the ground before you, the bracers in the mud. I think that's a great place to end tonight's session. <laughs> oh, gosh. I feel like Danny are making me wait. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, now I can't. Oh, now I'm just going to be thinking about this all week. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Mm, you're welcome. <laughs> We're gonna. It's gonna get exciting. Awesome. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh well. All thanks right. For, oh yeah, Mort. Well done. Yeah. Very exciting. Um, mm, and um, amazing players. Lots of fun stuff. Crazy journey. We're get. We're getting pretty close. There is like another option or two along the way. We got like two weeks. And uh, depending on what you do, I mean, if, if you take, you know, the options that get you to Kaylin um, faster, you know, I mean, we'll be there within like a week or two. Uh, it's wild. Kaylin, saving Kaylin is finally almost I'm so here. I'm so nervous. I'm so effing nervous. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Woo! So for anybody new, uh, I'll put up our schedule here. We have a boatload of D&D, mostly in this 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern time slot, uh, as well as the 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern uh, every Saturday. Uh, every Tuesday, 2 to 4 Eastern, uh, we have Dungeon Craft with Steph and Vic, where they paint minis and tile work for their campaigns here in the stream. It's amazing and hilarious. Uh, every Friday, noon to 3 we have Mad Art with Steph, our very own Steph here. Um, works on fan art from across different campaigns. So if you're not already a member of our Discord, I'd highly recommend joining. We have a boatload of supportive and fun and awesome stuff. Uh, but you can also put in requests for votes. Um, uh, requests for fan art, uh, which will be voted on. And then every Sunday, 2 to 5 p.m. Eastern, we have Mad Bird Plays Board Games. Uh, hosted by Vic, um, where she plays with different folks each week um different tabletop board games and uh it's currently still in hiatus as we have some some major hardware issues that we're trying to sort out and get that programming back up and running um we recently started in november we started our own patreon you can check out the different tiers here uh e even at the starving artist tier the five dollar tier um if you support us here or you're just looking to support us in general we recommend um considering Patreon uh, and, uh, versus here. Uh, as um, you still get your subscriber die that you can give to a player uh, or an NPC, uh, giving them 2d8 to roll for anything, except for death saving throws, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, <laughs> on Patreon, <laughs> this is the, the fine print <laughs> I better put in there, um, we can give you more through Patreon and a little more goes to us um so back to us a uh, round of applause for our phenomenal uh players here yay so thank you dan <laughs> nice um yeah i think next uh next week you can look forward to uh all sorts of crazy stuff we're probably gonna have a divanya thing near the beginning there because i didn't get to hit up divanya too much tonight um so we'll have some juicy divanya blips uh to deal with and um more fun is as they make their way to to saving kaylin oh my gosh i i do i feel like i need to go back and look at the date and see like how long it's been since kaylin since that crossover or kaylin banffed hmm. like september hmm. oh my gosh that's one yeah. yes oh. I, I remember it was september because Mm -hmm. I was not part of the crossover because oh, yeah. uh, I had mm -hmm. something going on that day. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. forgot what it was, but it was definitely uh, in September. Wow. 
Nice. <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and read our, our friends uh, Pixel Circus. Uh, they're new friends, actually. We're going to go give them a raid and say hi. Um, please consider giving a caw caw Mad Bird raid for branding. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, we'll catch you all again soon. Take care. Bye. Mm -hmm. um, 